Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Force 5, the Star Wars action figure show, where I have a special guest on to discuss their five favorite Star Wars action figures. And today's special guest is an artist, a designer, an aficionado, Steve Evans. <laughs> welcome to the show. Do you like that introduction? <laughs> I do. I, I love that introduction, Ken. Thank you very much. I have very rarely am I called aficionado. I've called lots of other things, but well, uh, you know, you're, 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 a, you're a board guy and you're an aficionado. <laughs> As an inside joke, everybody about gourd. Uh, follow us on Instagram for more information. Yeah, yeah. More, more product to come somewhere, sometime. Uh, nice thank you nice for coming you. on the show. Hey, and, well. uh, and I gave you a hard task, it seems. It was a very hard task, Ken. I was like, Ken asked me, he said, hey, Steve, come on the show. We just talk about our top five Star Wars figures. I went, oh, oh, five? Uh, only five? <laughs> and you have to rank them. And rank them, yeah. And and anyone that knows me knows that I change my mind all the time on these things. So I've got a list in front of me, and I've got some sort of a variety of figures and things to the side of me. So this is very much in the moment on the day. Yeah, we'll give it a go. What the ranking is. So Five this, is, this is changeable. This is not permanent. Yes, it'll change <laughs> tomorrow. No, actually, well, this is the official. This is the official Kim Plume Force 5. Yeah. Top 5. We're locking this particular moment <laughs> in stone. Unchangeable yeah. until it's changed. Uh, yeah, is really what tomorrow. we're saying here. Until tomorrow. I have to do this every day. So tell oh, me a little cool. bit about your sort of collecting journey. Because you have a unique perspective, different from the guests that have been on the show so far since you were from the United Kingdom. Yeah, so Star Wars, where do we begin? Well, we can begin in 1977, of course. So uh, yeah, um, I saw Star Wars when I was on a family holiday, as we say in England, to, it, uh, we were actually in LA in 78, it was early 78, I had to ask my mum. I, uh, I was five, yes, I was five. And we went to Man's Chinese Theatre to watch it, the quintessential place. I don't remember hardly any of it, all I remember is the sounds of the uh, the TIE fighters because they terrified me. They love that sort of <laughs> coming out of their head. It was absolutely terrifying, but in intriguing to me. When I got back home, um, we were we used to live in a little town called Malden. I'll talk more about that later, I'm sure, in one of my top five. Um, but I saw the figures, the Kenner figures, and I was like, oh, that's that movie we saw, Mummy, when we were on holiday. I like that movie, and I started buying it, and then obviously Empire so you had back. no idea about it beforehand? No, no, I don't, I, you know, I was five. I don't, I don't have that strong memories. I remember going to America. I remember going to see Star Wars. I remember going to Disneyland. I remember Jaws at Universal Studios scaring the hell out of me. I just remember being frightened, Ken. I'll be honest with you. Oh, no, I, <laughs> I, I was I was and, around the same age when I had yeah. a Jaws encounter at Universal Studios, so I remember yeah, it well. Yeah, that, that Bruce model is terrifying. And so, so yeah, uh, so I was a Star Wars kid when I got home, got my figures, and then I was, I was in deep. And if you remember, like, back then, you didn't have that many brands to choose from whereas nowadays they come in and out very quickly kind of six months period but i was i was a star wars kid from the age of about six um all the way to about 13. now what about your peers at that point because here you go off on holiday you come back with this special knowledge of this wonderful thing did you have an awareness of whether your uh, friends were like i don't think it, it was big i mean it was big it was a global phenomenon I, i'll be honest with you i think in england it really hit my peers at our age at our school when empire hit in 81 that was the yeah that was the big um wait, that was the big oh my god this is a phenomenon and the toys were everywhere so i was just buying them and i had my friend bryce and andrew and gavin we all swapped figures and do you remember in those days you used to swap figures oh, oh then, i remember then, the then, black market that went on amongst yeah. kids un and, and, completely and, unsupervised by adults who had spent the, the actual mums, money for these the mums things would come back the mums would come back and say no you got to swap back yeah. i remember swapping or swapped, or and that's not a fair trade that's yeah that's like, ridiculous. We we're making it up ourselves. It's our rules, our lives. But I remember swapping a Rubik's cube for a torn torn with my friend Andrew. I got the root. I swapped him the Rubik's cube. He gave me the torn torn, <laughs> and I was like, "That's a good deal." And his mum coming back to my mum saying, "No, no, got to swap that back. That's not fair." He's like, "No, this is binding. This is legal. Yes. This is so under so the Kid Trade Act of yes. 1743." <laughs> so the so I was into Star Wars. I had a lot of stuff. Um, it was always something I asked for my nanny and granddad for Christmas. They bought me the Falcon. They bought me the Atta. Um, and then I, you know, I was 13. I kind of like lost interest in kind of childish things for a few years. And I gave them to the kids I babysat for. I babysat for Andrew and Christopher. And I gave them to them. And, you know, they melted them and broke them up and threw them away. They and flushed what them kids down. do. Yeah, flushed them down the toilet. And uh, and then I was out of it. I was, uh, you know, I was at, I was at uh, well, secondary school, high school. 
um, doing graphics and designs. I'm a graphic designer by by trade, which always makes me sound like a carpenter. <laughs> uh, and then and then when I was about 17, 18, where I was finishing off my art course and thinking about going to university, college, um, there was some. I don't remember. I don't remember the moment, but I was at a boot sale, which is the same as a flea market over here. And I remember seeing a a Star Wars figure and go, oh, I, used to, oh, I remember those. And like, I was old enough to get that wave of nostalgia. And you get that when you're sort of like 16, 17, when you think you're all grown up. And you have and your pocket I, money. I, yeah, and I just started buying them again. I started buying them. My friend Simon started buying them and we used to go every week. And then I found out that there was this sort of like subculture of people who bought and sold. There was collectors. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's a bit nerdy, but I like it. And it's, so I started getting into it. And then I found, um, Song Suite's book. Um, Steve's oh, it's over there. Steve's book. Um, the silver I, cover. I will, run, I will run up and down a lot on this. Uh, come from screen to concept to collectible. Got that. So I found this book and I was like, ah, oh, there's a culture. I like this. So I got into it. And when I was at university, I bought and sold Star Wars figures to help me through. So I'd go to boot sales and buy them and then sell them mail order through magazines. And people used to send in checks. Yeah. We should say this, this boot sale... <laughs> Reacquisition is pre-internet. This is yeah. This, yeah. It, it wasn't pre- an online community to and, talk about these things with. And then, and I, you asked me the story. You're going to get the story, Ken. And I'm glad this is like an hour or so. But uh, yeah, no, I did, I did that at university, and then I came out of university. So I was a big Star Wars fan. I was a big um, ILM fan. I wanted to work in the movies. I wanted to do special effects. I was graphics and design. And I got a job at a film poster company for a few years. And then in 99, when um, Ep1 was released, a job came up at Hasbro in the UK. And I was like, I need to get in there because I can get free figures. <laughs> that was my driving <laughs> driving motivation. And I managed to get in. And I worked at Hasbro in the UK for 11 years doing various things. And then I, um, I was helping Hasbro set up their movies and their TV shows, things like Rescue Bots, Transformers Rescue Bots, and Chuck and Friends, and helping do movies. Things like launching Chuck Action Man. Stuff. Yeah, I was doing Action Man. And, and I came over here with my family. And eventually, as I moved around, someone said to me the golden words, like, do you want to run Star Wars product design, the toys? Because the new movies, the new sequel trilogy is coming out. And I was like, hard pass. <laughs> yeah, no, don't fancy it. Don't fancy it. So I man I said I know nothing about product, like in terms of in terms of plastic and how to make them. I said, but you know, I've lived these the this toy line for 20, 30 years. So um I got that job and did that for five years, and now I'm doing marble. But uh, so in terms of my collector story, it was like um 50 next year. So I've played with them for like 45 years, I've collected them for 30, and I've worked in the toy industry for 20 years. Um, it is by far my favorite. Uh, my favorite brand you know i love lots of other brands like marvel and, and things like that and you can see i've got a whole load of stuff behind me so so for you to ask me what are your top five i have a whole span of years like everyone else does i have a host whole span of stories that everyone else does but i also have these these sort of insider kind of feelings and knowing how they were made and little offshoot stories some of which i can tell some of which i can't but that that was i, made, I know the that, that that I throw most- down. i know i know the did you, now, did you have a awareness of brands before Star Wars, before as a child getting yeah. hooked into that? Yeah, I was, I, I, I was, I was big into Superman. I got a large Superman. Well, I say a large. I haven't got a large Superman collection, but I got a healthy. I mean, to be Superman fair, collection. there is not a large amount of stuff available for Superman well, over the yeah, years. Yeah, that that bugs me. Why that that why they made didn't make a whole toy line for the Donna? Uh, I could do a whole another hour on that. We'll do that another time. Yeah, no, um, I mean, we will. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like i was big into superman um i had a lot of um fisher price adventure people they were huge i had the sea explorer which is over right it's all difficult doing it backwards which is over there and so yeah i i knew i liked toys and i liked playing with them and i liked the sort of movies i liked like just like movies but star wars was just and like, people don't know adventure people or the uh or the Mego line those were sort of like the first of the handheld action yeah. figures for yeah. kids. I would say Mego invented three inch well they did invent three and three quarter inch, you know, with their pocket heroes and comic heroes and things like that. And Fisher Price, you know, let's not forget that the, the original Kenner prototypes were made, they're built from um uh, built from Fisher Price. And, and people and should I, look up. I made where the where is it? Where is it going? I made one up. I do some customs, I muck around with customs. So I kind of like made a 
made, I'm going to use my zoom in to try and think. I made like a fake. <laughs> a fake Obi-Wan? I think he was, I think he was like a, a space captain. And so that's the Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's what they used. Which is so, brilliant. Just as Richard far as. Price was the found, um, French people was a foundation. The so Star Wars line was the first custom when it came to. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, so before it, there was a Star Wars line, there were custom Star Wars figures. And it, and it hasn't changed that much in the industry. You know, when you're making toys and you're trying to pitch an idea, you cut up other toys. You cut up other toys. You do a bit of 3D printing. You slap some paint on just to kind of show the idea. And I've got one of my top five, which will kind of show a little bit of that. Well, it's but, also fascinating to look at how much, you know, people talk about reuse within figures and what parts can be used to make sure that you can maximize the amount of figures that you can do. Yeah. And that, that whole aspect fascinates, you know, if people can actually, you know, just do a deep dive into what pieces are reused from figure to figure to be well, able now, to make sure you have as large a line yeah. as possible. Well, now I'm on, now I'm on Marvel, like the legends team, Dwight and Ryan and, 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 and Rob, the engineer, they're, they're, they're like, they're like rain man minds of like, which pieces exist you know there's hundreds and hundreds of legends figures and they oh we can use the legs from that the arms from that and it allows us to you know be economical with tooling to allow us to do more figures no oh, i tried to tell the, uh, the the folks who did the uh, the vintage collection book i said well what if we, you just did a like a poster or a guide to part reuse yeah and they said sure. no. they said a hard <laughs> no they would <laughs> I'm sure someone out there already has a. Someone is tracking yeah. mentally oh, yeah. what's what's reused. Yeah, this well, is what I like. That's I where like the about... pants came yeah. from. Uh, so, I think we should get to your number five choice. All right. So this okay. this and you can tell me if this was difficult because number five also implies others had to be pushed aside and yes. left behind to get a start with this yes. number five yeah and number five is going to be not what anyone expects i i have a feeling because it's not like a hardcore collector thing it's not like a well-known figure i don't even know if anyone knows it but um uh but i'll tell you the story behind it. so my number five actually i've got a t-shirt kind of of it i should i should bring it up there you go there, there, there. <laughs> number five is the interactive trooper rogue one 20 was that 2016 i think um and this figure is basically a 12 inch figure, you know, limited articulation, and it has a little, uh, little accelerometer chip inside, Reporting for duty, Commander. which allows it to react to whatever gestures you do with it. So if I want to fire the gun, and if you throw it in the air, you get the little helm scream. <laughs> and if you hang him upside down, you make some kind of witty comment. Um, when I was a kid, and I explained about my. Um, the kids I babysat where they would burn it and melt it and stuff. And as you rightly said, like all kids did, right? And I used to do the same. You know, I used to get my X-Wing and burn holes in it and drop my, I had a snow trooper that was particularly loose and I would love to put him at the top of the window and have him flop and then fall. It <laughs> fell really well. I'm sure there are still G.I. Joe figures buried in the dirt in Quantico yeah. where I grew up that I yeah. don't even know. And I, and I remember as a kid going, I really want a figure that screamed, that did the Wil Wilhelm scream. Because I wasn't aware of the Wilhelm or where it came from. But I was, it was like, I want, I want a figure that when I drop it, it screams. So when I got onto the team and we were doing, you know, Force Awakens and prepping for Last Jedi and we had Rogue One and we're like, storm, trip, typical Stormtroopers are coming back in. I was like, I want to do a figure that screams when you drop it. And so this, this was I hope just you said like, it in that exact tone of voice. Oh, I did. It was just like, <laughs> can we do one that drops? And, and so we did it. And this was like, a, this was literally a boyhood dream. Cause I, I remember, I remember pitching this idea. I've got videos of filming my son throwing figures around and putting overlaying voices and things. That's how I used to pitch the ideas. But this holds a special place in my heart. Only the fifth special place, but this one, the Interact, the Interact Tech Trooper. I um, did not know um, that existed yeah, until just did, this moment. I did a uh, I did a uh, commercial voiceover with Candice Payne, who was Chewbacca mom. You remember Chewbacca mom uh -huh. in like Force Awakens? So she, they were, we did a film with her where she, it's at Christmas time, and she's putting this in a stocking, and I did voiceover. I'll have to send you the video so you can put it up. But now I'm just uh, imagining yeah. a Christmas commercial of just hundreds of them falling like snow yes. doing the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> actually, that would have been a better, that would have been a better <laughs> shtick, actually. We didn't do that. Damn it, Ken. Well, you know but, what? Uh, yeah. Do do commercials for things that you did in the past, and that'll be the holiday commercial that you start. Maybe that's it. Maybe yeah. you start filming commercials for your things and your collection. 
like retrofit commercials. That'd be wicked. That's actually a good idea. Might do that. You know, I mean, now I'm that you're like, relaunching the uh, the Tall Toy Tales, how can you say it? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I chose Force Five as. Oh, you you did struggle on that first episode. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it. I got everything else fine. I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Good so thing it happened right after the start. Interact tech, inter see, even that's difficult to say. Interact tech trooper number five. So, talking about the design like that, like how much for you, if you were to percentage it, of the work you've done is just wish fulfillment, personal wish fulfillment? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of the fan community will say, All of it. He makes all the decisions just for himself. He's rubbish. <laughs> um, no, I, you, I call it cherry picking. There are some things that you cherry. And, like, Listen, at the end of the day, it's like I'm a huge fan as well. And the vast majority of people that work in our industry that do, especially these types of brands like Star Wars and Marvel, you know, Joe, like Lenny on Joe, like you wouldn't believe how much of a fan he is. They're fans themselves, which is good and can also be bad because it can make you too subjective sometimes. So I'm I'm very, I'm very guarded about my subjectivity of things i like and i want because i know that they come from a true place but sometimes you've got to remember that not everything you choose i'm a 50 year old uh male so like i you know i have my i have my a few but i got to remember that a lot of the other things all the other people buying them aren't my age aren't right. my nationality aren't yeah you know, we're all different so you have to sometimes temper yourself a little bit and say whoa 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 are you doing it for you or are you doing it for the fans? So, but every once in a while, you get a screaming stormtrooper through the gate. I don't care what anyone else thinks. <laughs> I love this and I did it. <laughs> that's how you end the holiday commercial. That, yeah, that yeah. is, that's the let, final let, pitch. Let me, have one. let me have one thing, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, your number four choice. Number okay. four. Number four. Uh, so, obviously, when I joined Star Wars, um, we were the black series was already kind of in motion. It was still in its early days. I came in and introduced the red and black boxes and um, it, you know, it's a successful line and has gone from strength to strength, but there was, and there was lots of, lots of important figures in that line. And I'll do some honorable mentions first that I, that I have a very special place in my heart. Um, I have a gray haired Han number 18, which um as I understood it, didn't get to market because the original one had very brown hair. And then we did a re a rerun with gray hair. I only think if I've only ever seen one other of these out on Instagram. Um, my father passed away just before I got the Star Wars job. And I was always bragging to him, like, I'm gonna get the Star Wars, I'm gonna get the Star Wars job. So he never got to see me get the Star Wars job. And he always reminded me a bit of Harrison for he's a little kind of rascal. So when and 18 is for those that you know me, 18 is my family's magic number. Like, how much do you love me? When I was little, I say to my mom, oh, 18, it was the biggest number I could think of. So I have a, a rare gray-haired Han, but that's not my number five. Although now I think it should be. <laughs> anyway, so that, that's an honorable mention. The other honorable mention is something that a lot of people don't have. These, there's only, we only made 400 of these. This was a special gift that was given to all of the Star Wars team that worked on Force Awakens for Hasbro and, um, and Lucasfilm. And we made this little kind of prototype Chewbacca talking about co-pilots and, and, you know, friends and things. So, and unsurprisingly, I've got 18, number 18 out of 400. You can't see that, but anyway, um, 400 of these were made. I know that there weren't, there aren't 400 in existence because I had a whole stack of about 40 in my office up until I left the company and I had them shredded because I only wanted to give them to people who worked on the thing. So that was pretty cool. But I think the one I love the most, my the, my most favorite black series is, is Rex, is Captain Rex. And I'm going to zoom in on that. I'm sure everyone knows what Captain Rex looks like. But if you remember, I think this was, I'm going to get my date, dates wrong. I think this was 2017. It I pains me that. so much to see that. As, as I think it's San Diego. I do not have that. Oh, well, so it is, it this is, is our... This is our photo real technology. So uh, Rex and Ray. Um, I, I do have the Ray. In fact, yeah. I'll hold up the Ray. There we go. There you go. There you go. Head so these the are our first two photo real techniques of inkjet printing onto the onto the face that Marvel had been doing previously, but we hadn't been able to do it um, on Star Wars up until this point because you know, different manufacturers have different capabilities. But I remember seeing and going, "I want that on Star Wars. Like I, I that I, that's got to happen on Star Wars." So Ray. Um, Rex was the first one, and I just remember the response from the fans when we showed them photo reel, and they were like, "It's a game oh, changer." 
it was like, oh my God, it's so good. And I was so proud. And I you know, I partnered with a guy, Joni Navaji, who many of you will remember from my Star Wars days. He was my marketing partner. And Rex is a big, big, he's one of Rex's biggest fans. Like he loves Rex. He's been trying to do Rex for years. And I was just pleased that he got his, he got his Interact Trooper by getting Rex. <laughs> and um, and the other the sort of sub story behind this is that um, obviously, I was fascinated by the character Rex because I would say that Rex was probably one of those characters that sort of stood out from the Clone Wars that wasn't a main character. He was almost like a Boba Fett. It was like everyone suddenly was like, Rex is cool. Captain Rex, he's cool. Old Man Rex, was he was he was he in Jedi? And then when the Clone War, um, sorry, when you know Clone Wars and Rebels came out, we had Old Man Rex. And so Rex became this 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 thing. And there was a guy who worked, who worked on the Clone Wars, who was an animator, his name's John Farmer. And he looks exactly like old man Rex. I'm going to zoom in. Um, and he was an animator. And they actually modeled the character design on John. Uh, I was like, hey, you could look like Rex. So they, he had a big white beard. And let's give him a big white beard. So he used to go around with a 501st and he used, to, he used to do charity stuff and raise money. And he was capped. He was Captain Rex. And John was such a dear, dear man. Unfortunately, sadly, he, he passed away a couple of years ago. I think it was like two, maybe even three years ago um such such a lovely bloke and so caring and did so much you know for for other people and so rex always holds a special place in my heart just for the memories of john where and that was the first not the first time but that was really cemented this idea of this community doing stuff for others and like getting to know the five of first and, and meeting and watching them do things and I, I was just i was it was an honor it was an absolute honor to be part of to be considered part of that community so rex signifies that for me i mean how does it feel to design these things to know that there is an emotional level and depth beyond just releasing a toy how much does that factor into how you approach yeah. a line yeah, or a figure I, yeah and it depends sometimes it's about the character and what it stands for and the love for it like um for example um uh, Sabine and Hera in Rebels, you know, very, and Ahsoka, very strong female character. You know, we've had Leia, but like since Leia, that they, they come on. And I go to San Diego and I see whole families dressed up as Rebels, the Rebels crew. And 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 I see like little Sabines. I got pictures of little Sabines and little Ahsokas are like three years old. So knowing that these characters mean something to different people and they help spread that brand within a family is very emotional i don't create the characters my team doesn't or team didn't create the characters but having a little part in that and spreading that is really but there's something about codifying that character in like the firmament of of star wars or marvel or they getting a figure is a huge leap and a huge thing for someone to be able to hold a physical representation yeah. of that thing they love like it, it you know it it is it almost is an honor to be bestowed upon a character to go, not only were you in this thing, but you now are a physical object. We see that there is an interest and in that you like this thing enough to where, hey, look, this is real. This is real now for you. It's not just on the screen. You're not just yeah. making customs on your own out of this thing. Now you can go to a store and in a nice package, here is that Ahsoka figure. Yeah, it, it does. It, and and for, yeah, especially for young kids, it does help me when there's something physical to hold. You know, when they're younger, when they're really young, they grab these figures. They usually grab larger ones like that. And it's it's, it's interesting. The psychology is like, he's my friend. When they're sort of two, three, four, he's my friend or she's my friend. And then when they get into five, six, seven, it's like, I want to be them. I want to control. I want to make them do what I want them to do. And then, then it's called it's called uh, got, uh, it's called world building. The 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 mind of the kid goes higher, and that's why often the figures get smaller so they can play out stories. So it's it's really interesting. But as I, that's nothing I like more than seeing like a three four year old with 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 their figures or dressed up, just being excited and like i love it when they run to the run to the store or run to the shop and they go look daddy look daddy it's luke skywalker you know especially well, like nowadays like three or still knows who luke skywalker is i mean you know for our generation the figure reveal was when we'd go to a store see some other figure but look on the back and find out what was coming out or what oh, was available yeah and like oh they're actually making that thing yeah. or the other side of it because of the generation we were in is what is that who is that? But it looks cool. Yeah. Because yeah. without you know, so many things, we got revealed with zero context. Yeah. 
as yeah. to what it, they were. It's fun. It's fun. So I think so. Yeah, that's a that's a so Rex number four is quite an emotional one, and yeah, there is a lot of emotion running through it. I mean, everyone that's watching this, I'm going to assume, hasn't just stumbled across you on YouTube that they're into the they're into the community, they're into the brand, the stories, the toys, or the games, or anything like that. And like, we love it. It is a love. It is a love, and it's and people go, oh, click toys, what an idiot, and it's like, nah, it, it's so deep. And I'm I'm actually working. I won't say too much, but I'm working on like uh, some sort of sounds very grand like a white paper like a scientific white paper as to why people collect and what are the emotional reactions and psychology behind it and people have done a lot of that work already but we're trying to find some new angles just to try and explain why the hell do we do what we do why do we spend so much money and so much time so much love why do we feel so passionate about this thing behind me <laughs> and behind you and, and and the you know the 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 weird specificities and ephemera connected to it and yeah you know that people can get deeply emotional and angry about a you know a plastic bubble on a bit yes, of packaging. They can, don't they? yes they can <laughs> i certainly did and and yeah. where that comes from and like you know okay well maybe that's because that's where the emotional attachment was was patterned on that representation of a thing so it carries through in you know sometimes extreme ways uh contextually for i mean at the end of the day it's not world changing but it is an emotional connection regardless that is rooted in that sort of deep primal place where you have those childhood attachments yeah and i i like it i'm liking the collective the abc the 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 achievement belonging control and like the control bit of like you know this world is crazy at the moment like and it's always been crazy but it's crazy and like i don't know about you but i like to try and keep some control i have teenage kids i'm hitting 50 and i'm like i'm feeling out of control so having a collection that i can choose what to what to purchase what to what to what to place next to each other and what i want to get is a, just a little sense of control some aspect of life you can curate yeah exactly the uh, hu humans are curated so it fascinates me it fascinates me have you gone through stages like that in your collecting when you, you know, post when you got back into it, where you've fallen out of love with things like, no, oh, well, that thing is not as important to me now, but I want to focus on this other thing. So maybe I'll push that other to the side. In terms of collecting toys, things I don't love in toys. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, things that yeah, maybe were really yeah, important I'm... to you that you're not, not so. Yeah. I got, I got a, I have a, I think I understand your question. I have a, I have a cupboard full of stuff that I'm not putting out. And like, I, I'm very not, not familiar with that at all. Not uh, each, that, no. that aspect. Each <laughs> square. So I try and keep because like it could just go crazy. You know, I have I have one of eight, I mean, I've got eight details. Each square has to be a memory, has to be a particular I try and do it a period of time. So I like I have my ET 80s, 70s, 60s. I have my I, I, I do it very specifically. And I try <laughs> to keep it eight details. <laughs> so if I run out of space, I've got to take things out and put other things in. So you have to, and that can get quite stressful. Like so you're oh, constantly I, making judgment calls. I take out. Like, like I got to take, I got to take my fish. I got to take my adventure people out to put in asterisks. I'm like, oh, God, do I want? <laughs> I like asterisks more than adventure people. I don't know, Ken. I don't know. <laughs> or or the the weird sort of feeling when you've gotten the holy grail, but it upsets the display balance that you've achieved yes yes or you complete like i got i don't know is there a complete i don't like like i got all the indie figures and that was good i enjoyed that i got it i, I was very jealous that. of your unbroken thumb yeah i know right because <laughs> i'm huh? actually mine is on my desk my childhood one that i still have and sure enough Got a bust thumb. He's got his I busted thumb. What doing with that? That must have been a weird drying, a weird cooling time on that. I don't know what happened. But yeah, I got some getting, and that's why I get retro stuff because they're sort of controlled. It's like it, it's a finite. Like I don't collect Marvel Legends. I pick out ones that I like or I, there's interesting stories. But I like the retro stuff because there's a finite. Like I'm going to get Clash of the Titans. I want to finish that. I'm not going to get the uh, the Kraken because it's ridiculously priced. But I'll get all the <laughs> You say well, that now. Yeah, but if you ran across a Kraken that was just in that sweet spot, of maybe. But anyway, it's a we've all said that about things we'll never get. Yeah, and then suddenly an opportunity presents itself, and you're like, 
I can fill well, that hole like, in my my mind. Of... Well, it's the same with Star Wars. Let's take that back to Star Wars, where when I was at university, I had everything, but I was buying and selling it. It was coming in, it was coming out. Like I had all the ships. I, but it, but when I collected for myself these figures here, oh, and I got two Dettos, right? I only got two. Uh, I got all the figures loose. And I was like, I'm just getting figures. I'm not going to get the ships. It's too much. I get too crazy as he sees the barge and there's the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things that uh, the Razor Crest and stuff. But I was like, no, I'm not going to get, I'm not even going to get, get Torn Torn. I'm not going to get Java. I'm not going to get anything that can kind of be themed as figures. And I was like, ah, oh, that Slacious Crumb's cool. I like him. He could sit really well. But then I've got to get the Dias with Java. All right, I'll get Java. It'll, yeah, I'll get Java. It's fine. Got that. And then I go, now I should get the Torn Torn, but I'm not going to get the Split Belly Torn Torn because I didn't have that when I was a kid. I'm going to get the Solid Belly Torn Torn, but I'm a real stickler for quality, so it's got to be like like hardly untouched. Can't find a Wampa because they're all yellow. And now I'm like, damn it! I'm now in. I'm now in. Yeah. I'm oh now no, you're in. in. No, yeah. At that point, oh. you might as well just accept that you've, it's mini you've gone down the rabbit rigs. hole. You're never coming out. Yeah, mini rigs. Well, they are only small. Oh, now I'm going to get mini rigs. Oh, now I might as well get a snow speed, a speeder bike. And by the end of it, I'll be getting the actor like you and like getting my Falcon out again. It's just oh, crazy. Yeah. And now I need you know another speeder bike, and then I need another speeder bike because you know there's at least four in the scene. Yeah, that's when it gets crazy, and I haven't found fallen off the cliff into those multiples and things. I remember Daryl the Priest who I used to work with. You know, he's ran the Star Wars business for a long, long time. He would have platoons i think it's platoons or legions what he'll he knew how many people were in a platoon or a legion and he would have <laughs> you go i click platoons it's gonna have 60. so, you'd have like so 60. he was keen on the troop building aspect yeah of it. yeah i remember seeing pictures of his display it's just like lows. <laughs> when you start hanging things just because you've run out of shelf space i yeah. think that's that's a yeah. threshold to cross as well anyway You're like well i got I, airspace to fill i mean <laughs> If just find a space to do that. Just I'm yeah. looking at the back there. You got quite a few stuff. Yeah, hanging. there's. Yeah, there's. Well, I mean, he, Doctor Strange, of course. Yeah, I was gonna say, who's that? You start you trying like... to justify who would be the characters who I was could looking be back. Hanging. I was looking back there. Is that Strange hanging in the back there next to Superman? Yeah, Strange, Strange's. Yeah, because I thought uh, that was. Is yeah. that's a, a Harry Potter? I thought that was. I have normal. I have the Hot Toys Superman that's actually over to uh, that side. I and then I have the Superman three dark superman that's in front of my desk up here oh show me that it can uh, you get it oh no uh, i don't know. <laughs> see. You, know what? you know what here's the good thing is that because i'm a problem solver i can take a picture of it there and then hold it up to the camera for you is that a hot toys darks oh that's cool it comes it come with like loads of peanuts <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a flick just flicking peanuts wicked yeah he I didn't see that. That's cool. Yeah, I think this was uh, an exclusive at that the time. That is a good scene. But how can you not? That's a good scene. I mean, the rest of the scenes are pretty neat, but that's a good scene. Just to get a <laughs> nice, stern uh, Christopher Reeve Superman yeah. Yeah. head on it yeah. is worth getting. Uh, so we're at the midpoint now. We're at your number yeah. three choice. We are. All right. Number three. People are going to laugh. Quite a five, not quite a one. People are going to laugh at me at this. Um, in case you have noticed, in case, in case you noticed, I like stories. I like things that have a background or a story behind them. So this one isn't necessarily what I'd call the greatest figure ever made, but uh, this kind of epitomizes my time on when I was on Star Wars. It's Constable Zuvio. Zuvio, Zuvio. This guy has got more story mileage than any other Star Wars figure <laughs> I think I've ever worked on. <laughs> So when we were developing, I'm going to get myself in focus here. I'm trying to be clever. Um, when we were working on The Force Awakens, we have we had, I remember the first lot of assets that came in from Lucasfilm. First sketches, first concept drawings, character designs, photography, all this kind of stuff, way back in like 14, um, end of 14. And, you know, Needless to say, and I was I was pretty excited. I was like, okay, let's look, let's look, let's look, let's look what they're doing. <laughs> and Zuvio was the first alien. It was one of the first things we looked at. 
And I was like, oh, he's cool. Look at him. He's got like an Embo hat. It's, oh, it's like a new alien. It's different, but it feels Star Wars-y. And they were like, yeah, he's going to be as comfortable. He's on Jakku. He's kind of like this sort of law. He's, there's a law of society. He's kind of in and out. And he's sorting things out. And we're like, he's wicked. And it's like, is he a main character? Well, no. And it's like, oh, so he's going to be like Hammerhead or Wars Man. Going to have this like little, great, we'll do him. He's cool. So we were doing him and doing him and doing him. And then when we went and saw the movie, he wasn't in it. <laughs> and we we're like, where was Zubio? And like So at no had, point in the process it, of of there's no point when they were making editorial decisions that no one went, by the way, one of your launch figures it's actually not going to be in there. You may yeah. get questions. Yeah. No, we didn't we didn't get to hear that. And we, you know, at the end of the day, they make the cuts, they make the story. Um so everyone was like, we did it, we did that, we did a six inch, and they were almost <laughs> like, Where's this guy? Where's he from? Blah, blah, blah. Idiots, they don't know what they're doing. Stupid. I'm like, what that's never happened before in a <laughs> in a toy line. Come on. <laughs> and so anyway, months went past and he sat on shelves and you know, he was always the one that was left over. And I felt really sad for him. I thought because he's a cool, he's a cool design. I like the design. And then then I started noticing people on on social media kind of cool Zubio's cool he's the one and there was this guy Martin who I'm friends with he's a fellow Brit he writes for fan for tracks and uh he's on on Instagram what's his Darth Darth Fluff Martin um and he started buying up every single Zubio he could find he he was the Zubio nice he says, I'm the biggest Zubio fan in the world and he still is and every time that he because he appears in comics and and games and I yeah, think no, was, he's, was a, he's he's since become a fleshed out character yeah, yeah I think I think he was in the bar or one of his species was in the bar on the Mandalorian and that sort of that trade a bit but yeah, where they cuts the guy in half um, so he buys all this stuff and like people making T-shirts he sent he sent me a where's my badge I had like a little pin. And he set up this thing called the Zuvium. <laughs> the Zuvium. And, and he said, you must come and visit the Zuvium. And I was like, what the hell's the Zuvium? He says, I've created That sounds this. like a hero's journey set before you. Yeah. He, I've set up this, I've set up this museum in honor of Zuvio. It's, it's a digital, you can, it was during, um, it was during the pandemic. He said, it's his experience. He said, if you want to, I'll invite you and you can come and experience it digitally, virtually. And I was like, all right, okay. So anyway, <laughs> he sent me an invite and there was a there was a video, uh, there was a recorded video of, I think of the artist that designed Zubio and he gave, oh, it's my character, I designed it for Force Awakens. Yeah, I'm very proud of my work. Blah, blah, blah. And you wait in this waiting room, a virtual waiting room. And then Martin comes in, he says, welcome. It's a bit like Disneyland. He says, welcome, come on in to the We're Zubio. John Hammond. Yeah, he'd get, yeah. <laughs> welcome to the Zuvium. He spared no expense. He came in. Welcome to the Zuvium, and it's his downstairs toilet. <laughs> it was just, but he had all this. He had all this Zubio stuff. He had all these figures on the walls. He had like original art pieces, sketches, signed things. It was brilliant. So we had this sort of virtual tour of his downstairs toilet of all this cool Zuvio stuff. And he does that for people. You can go on Facebook and look up the Zuvium and make appointments. I think still to go and visit him. So. Well, that's one of the unique things about Star Wars as a universe is that it's so dense with characters. Oh, yeah. That you can, that someone could hyper focus and be, I can, I'm the, the person who collects this one. This is my thing. Yeah. I'm only going to collect this one. Yeah. I saw a guy on Instagram, a kid. I think it was a, yeah, he was like a kid. He had like, he was into um, 2-1-B, medical droid. That was it. That was 2-1-B. I love 2-1-B and he's got all the 2-1-Bs with their see-through <laughs> stomachs and he had like loads of them. And I remember, uh, you know, Mark Boudreau, who I worked with, uh, who was a part of the Star Wars team. Who, if, if you don't know Mark Boudreau, then... then Absolute know legend. Um, he's Boba Fett. He collects Boba Fett. Every, his favourite is Boba Fett. He's good. You know, he was good friends. You know, obviously Jeremy passed away, but he was good friends with Jeremy Bullock. Every, go down to his basement like that. It's all Boba Fett. <laughs> Boba Fett. Boba, Boba, uh, whichever. But yeah. So Zuvio has this sort of cult following and T-shirts and pins and patches and Zuviums. And well, the, the one day, is, a lot of these things, yeah. people will talk about these, the, the hyper-focused collectors on characters, these sidekicks. It often starts as jokes. Yeah. Like, oh, it's a gag thing. I'll buy up all the Zuvios because no one's giving oh, any love to Zuvio. Yeah. And then suddenly it's a lifetime. Like, I think there's someone out there, uh, Veer's Watch. 
yeah. who was just a hyper fan of General Veers. Crazy. And started this Veers watch about waiting to see, is, is there a Veers sighting? Is Veers in this story? Is Veers back in this? To the point where, I guess in that certain point of view book that came out for uh, yeah. Empire Strikes Back, it revealed that Veers survived that attack on Hoth. Mm. And there's like this massive celebration of vindication for Veers Watch. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I wasn't aware. I'm going to have to check out Veers Watch. Brilliant. Brilliant. So That's the idea of that. Zubio, the idea that, you know, the, the people that, uh, you know, for years derided Jar Jar as a character. Yeah. And now how that has turned around. And, yeah, and suddenly people are, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. I, and we're talking about Zubio, if I'm remembering correctly, that was the alien for the force awakens release right there were no other aliens yeah. featured in that yeah. release the initial release like that was the one you got that was an alien character from the new star wars that was the hammerhead the snaggle tooth that everyone goes Ooh, what's that what's that they knew everyone else but that was yeah so i love him i love i love zuvia and uh i th th there's always little stories behind i've got an honorary mention on this one because i was Zubio won, but I did. I do love Uncle Plot, <laughs> and I love Uncle Plot um, because of the little story. So when um, talk about cutting room floor. So when we did Uncle, and uh, he was like using our wave two or three, I can't remember. But in the movie, there was a scene where Chewbacca rips his arm off, which never made the movie. We knew about it, and so we weren't allowed to do like with removable arm. Because it would give away the thing. So I was like, look, we got, I got to zoom in on this. We got like, um, you know, we have different molded plastic. So we have the, the beige of the arm and a beige of the sort of shoulders. And then we have this, which is separate piece and it's kind of glued in. We didn't paint it. I think there's a split line there. There's a split line on the other arm, which we didn't glue. So you can pull it off. <laughs> and I was like, for me, it was like, let's just do it. They won't know. It's fine. And then yeah, when it's it an articulation out, point, it's... and when it comes out, We'll then tell everybody, oh, look, Uncle, uh, Uncle Plutt's arm comes off. So I don't think Lucas actually knew about this, or maybe one of them did. But we said, we'll just do it. We won't say it. And it never made the movie. And I was so proud of this because it's so, like, cheeky. Um, but then when it got, when we found it, you know, it, when the DVD came out and it was in the deleted scenes, and then I said, oh, by the way, all your Uncle Plutt's, the arms come off. So just, <laughs> I have fond memories of that one, but I like all the stories behind them. You need to check out my Uncle Plutt unboxing video. That's out there. Oh, you go on? I do. Ah, I will. Very I unique. So, that. speaking of Simon unboxing, Peg, it? it was Simon well, Pegg, wasn't it? It was Simon. Yeah, yeah it was Simon Pegg. Yeah. In the suit. Yeah. In the desert. Yeah. Hot. Well, he likes to complain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the boxing unboxing, leaving in package. Because here you are. You know, you're you're doing these boot sales in yeah. the early nineties uh late 80s early 90s so you're you're finding these things at were you ever an on-card collector were you always a nah, it's, it's gotta I, be about loose I've, I've got one i've got one on card that i won't open and i've bought cards i've bought figures not star wars figures i can't afford to buy more card <laughs> um <laughs> i've bought figures to take like I bought the um the Tron warrior on a card because I wanted to be sure that his glow in the dark staff was genuine and I opened it because I want the figure so I I I am a let and breathe and I know it's funny Ryan <laughs> my own Marvel team like is absolutely mint on card hates it when I rip things open I love ripping things open and I don't do it to be an ass someone actually came to me on Instagram and said why do you do that why buy that you should leave it for somebody that loves it on card you should just buy a loose one and my my point of view is that I actually get my emotional connection with toys opening them because that's what I did as a kid I got them from the store and the sound of it opening and the crinkling of blisters, not my own, but the you know the, the bubbles, <laughs> it, it just makes me. I'm sal salivating now. That's that's the special thing for me. So I don't do it to be an ass, and I don't do it to be clever or say, "Hey, look how much I've spent on this. Look at me." I do it because that's the thing that triggers my memory and my nostalgia. Um, so no, I'm not. I'm not a. If I have something on card and I've got another one here, I have it out of pack as well because I like to play with it. I'm. I'm I like yeah. to pose it, and so no, I would never. It presents a card. massive storage issue. 
yes. above and beyond. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those, uh, those blisters, they start adding a lot of empty airspace. Yeah. I have a friend who won't watch any of the videos where I open things. Yeah, it's weird, isn't just, it? Just, you know, and I've seen you uh, on some of the stuff that you've done where you uh, open up like a, a, a package of candy or, and I yeah. can imagine there are people going, why are you, what? You what had... are you doing value? And it's like, that, that the value is the opening to me. That's my value. That's what I do it for. So I spend the, the fact that you would open, you know, a a forty year old biscuit needed that. <laughs> that tasted thing. horrible. It was really horrible. It was not good. It was not good. I like the, the the look. Everyone should check this out. It is in one of your uh, tall toy it's, tales. It's in episode one of Mr. Stevie's tall toy tales. It's E. T. And I had an old E. T. biscuit from Lipton supermarket from nineteen eighty two. I found one unopened, like. Two years, the year and a half ago. For US viewers, uh, cookies. Yes, yes. Yeah, biscuit. Yeah, cookies. Yeah, a cookie. And so, yeah, I opened it and I Cold ate it. Cold the flavor and you were so excited. The look on your face. It was like, it was, well, I might as well just stuck my tongue on the end of the battery. That's what it tasted like. But what was great is the, you, that, you had such a joyful anticipatory look. Like this might be a good thing. This might still be what I remember. I remember the smell. That smell. They were, it was cola cream. It was disgusting. But I, I can smell it. And I, God, we're getting real deep into into. Uh, in two thousand and three, when my son was born, I had really bad sinus infection. So I had an operation, a septoplasty, where they go in, they drill your holes open, and my sense of smell now is like, it's almost like. Like I don't know what it's yeah, it's like a superpower. <laughs> so smell to me is really a really um uh strong trigger for nostalgia. Like if I think about things, I can smell things. So like I'm again, I'm salivating, just think thinking of that smell of cola. So when I got it and opened it, I was like, mm, I can't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> it smells of nothing. I taste it. It was it was grim. It was at, really at, at least you spit it out. At least you didn't did. commit fully. Nah, I Although I could see it playing across your face, of should I, should I just no, nah. no. This and I got some, be... I got some space dust as well. Some uh, uh, it was like pop rocks yeah. in the US. pop rocks, yeah. And I'm not opening that because I know it'll be disgusting. But that I imagine that now is it still granular in the package or is it yeah, sort of it solidified was... into a block? Yeah, most of it's still granular. Yeah, it's still. I, oh, pff, imagine the chemicals in that. My goodness, no. <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> Anyway. You say that now, but I can <laughs> see out you, content. I can, yeah, I can see you <laughs> putting up a poll at some point in your Instagram, going, "Should I, I eat it? Do I not eat yeah, it?" Yeah, tell me what. Tell me the thing I should do. Yeah, then you can blame them on it. They told you to do it. They told you to open it. They so, told you to eat it. So, your number two choice now. Number. Now that now this was so in the rankings before you you reveal it. What was the hardest position to choose? Because some could say, well, five obviously eliminates everything past five. And then some would say two is difficult because you're having to choose what the number one is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think, num I think number one, number one is going to be the most difficult for me. Um, and it's probably the one that changes depending on what memory I'm linking on to. But number two was actually, actually number two is pretty easy for me because I knew it was up there. Um, but I also knew it couldn't be my number one. Uh, so my number two, um, in case no one's noticed, I'm very, very proud of the barge. I'm very, very proud of what we achieved in setting up HasLab to be a way for fans to buy stuff that was insane that would never go to retail. They could never sit on a shelf would be too big or too expensive in a way that they could feel part of the process. And we're still fine tuning it. Um, you know, we've had successes. We've had things that didn't fund. But the whole HasLab thing was something that myself and Joni Lavaggi kind of toyed around with at the beginning of this. And the barge, was the, it was kind of created for the barge. We were like, how do we get the barge out there? It's, it's an the urban myth. Size don't happen. Yeah, it was an urban myth. They were going, people go, ha, you'll never do the barge, will you? But imagine if you did, it'd be wicked. You could put all the figures on, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, we did that. So I, the barge is not a figure. So that isn't my number two. Um, I will say just seeing that, because I found out about the barge after it happened. Oh. And so, but as soon as I saw it, my sense memory, my, my emotional connection went back to being a kid in the 80s and going to Toyland on Quantico Marine Base. 
which was a converted like Quonset hut that they had turned into a garden center and toy store wow. for the PX system. And seeing on the shelf the USS flag. Yeah, yes. The G.I. Joe aircraft yeah. carrier. And seeing how large that box was. Sitting on a shelf for sale. And I the two things I remember was seeing that and just being blown away by the notion of that. And then I remember how quickly my mother shut down <laughs> even the possibility of ever getting that thing. <laughs> and then I remember a friend having it because there was always, I don't know about you, but it always seems like there was the one friend that had the toys that you'll never get. Yeah. Like just through circumstance, they were the ones that their parents said, yeah, we'll get you the flag. We'll get you the, the you city. That turned, yeah. The city <laughs> transformer. We'll get, we'll get the big stuff for you. Uh, and just thinking that's like a bed that is that is a bed of a toy you could you could put sheets on that and sleep on your toy that it was so yeah. massive so see the good, that, the good news is you could all play around it you could have lots of friends around yeah. it. yeah oh no that was a centerpiece yeah. of of a gathering yeah. imagine the play of like i'm coming in i've got the planes i've got the star trek yeah or you could focus on your one area like i'm just the elevator operator yeah. in this place I don't. Brilliant. I'm not gonna have to deal with anything you're dealing with. I'm just Brilliant. operating this elevator. So I, seeing well, the barge, that's what it evoked for me. Yeah, that's the sort of Star Wars equivalent of that. Yeah, that and obviously the 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 the, the BMF, the big Millennium Falcon that Mark did is like. But I, I like watching people unpack it, and then their their kids. I like things where kids can get into it. They get into it, and they're in the galley, and they're all mucking around. And so, so anyway, my number two is attached to this because it is it's it's yak face. Um, um, salt marae or salad to Marie or whatever. It's yak face to me. Yeah. Like, um, and in uh, the barge, she's yak. Yeah, this one is called yak face. This is the <laughs> yak face, the one that came with the barge. And, um, you know, I won't open this. <laughs> I won't open this just because there's a story about the packaging. I have obviously, I have my, my, my yak face loose as well. But um, this was a big one for me when we were doing the barge and we were kind of thinking, oh, we should do like a little treat that goes with it i don't even know we'd called it a tear or an unlock or anything then we have to we'll just do like a special treat and we'll do yak face because i was a yak face the original yak face which i had which obviously was only uk and canada came out in 85 power of force um i all my all my original kenner i bought at a boot sale um in early 90s or late yeah early 90s and i got most of them all in one lot and they, they, they are like beautiful, like unplayed. They were squeaky, and, but I could never find Yak Face. My You're friend really keen on condition. So I'm really keen for on you condition. to get a, a great lot of well kept ones is yeah, yeah. It's I mean he's he's pretty easy and good nick, but I had to pay for him. My friend got him for ten pence, which is about fifteen cents in a car boot sale. But he had he had pen on his back on the back of his neck, and I was like, mm. I was always jealous that he got it. But I paid for this one, so the money I made and sold in. A university, I, I I used to buy food and survive, but I took ninety pounds. This is ninety pounds in like nineteen ninety one, ninety two, something like that. Which is not insignificant amount. No. Um. So this was great because I was always after him, and I was always jealous of my friend Simon who had one for like ten pence. So Yak Face, being that Grail, was like my first Grail, and I was like Yak Face, like the 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 weirdness of Yak Face that no one knew who he was and he wasn't available in all areas and it was you know, super expensive. So when we got to the barge, I was like, well, we got to do Yak Face. We have to do Yak. And so I just love this figure. I love the way, I love the way, it, I love the washing on it. I love the articulation, the way that the, uh, the, the, the fabric and the soft goods are kind of trapped and comes with a little glass. Um, even the story of this, I'll tell you a story about this image. So Obviously, we're recreating the original Power of the Force card, and it has a picture of Yak where, where he's got his he's got his glass in his hand, and he's kind of leaning up on one of the casual, cards. casual Yak. Yeah, casual. So you know, we we work with Lucasfilm to kind of go through their archives and get all the images, and they, there's some of them are still on 35 slides, and some of them are digitized, and we couldn't find this picture. We couldn't find the picture that was on the original one. There was a whole series of them. They obviously took a picture of. Um, Oh, I forgot the actor's name now. Oh, God, that was in Yak Face. I'm so sorry. I'm friends with him on Instagram. But the whole picture of him, um, what's his name? He sent me something, I can't remember. But there's a whole series of him, like, 
like every pose you can imagine <laughs> apart from that one that wears like that. And I was like, well, and they were like, oh, well, we'll just do another pose. I was like, no, 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 you can't. It's got to be the pose. It's got to be. So they had to digitally recreate his arm, like paint it in. I'd rather have something that's painted in than just like another one. Because I've done that before where I've used like nearly the same image or the next frame and people have gone, what? That's not the image. Yeah. So that's the little or story. Or background that. showing now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we have to sort of do that. But, um, and I think there was a guy on Instagram who, who I told this story before, I think briefly. And another guy came out and said, oh, I've got that. I've got that slide. <laughs> Well, how did you get it? And I was trying to find out who it was. I put, he probably doesn't want to be told, doesn't want me to tell everyone. But uh, supposedly the three, the, the 35 mil slide does exist somewhere. It's probably, I don't know. I don't know how so can the Star Wars team get it in time for whenever the next re release of Yak Face is? So, uh, yeah. So, so Yak Face, just, just as a grail, just as a figure, just as a, a, a token of what the barge was and meant at that time in my career at and Star Wars is just like huge, huge. Well, talk um, about that the detail oriented because you know you you brought up Mark earlier and sort of what he brought to the Star Wars line in design. You know what do you feel is sort of your signature when it comes to ooh. design? <laughs> That's a really good question. Now you got to remember that I wasn't. I'm not necessarily a. De- I am a designer, but I don't design the toys. I was you, direct. I was the direct. In, I was the conductor. Influence. I was the conductor. I make right. sure everyone's playing their instruments, but don't give me a violin. I'll make it. But you're also a. Wouldn't it be nice if we? Yes. Like, hey, Mark, let's make that at at walk. Hey. What if a stormtrooper hey. screams? What if the stormtrooper? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh God, that's really hard. Like some things that people don't like me for. Like I love five points of articulation, and I think the sculpting on uh, Last Jedi, you know, regardless of what you think in the film, was some of the best sculpts on 3.5 figures ever seen. And so I was proud of that. I was proud of the Black Series, bringing in photo reel, getting that done. I'm clearly proud of the barge, just in terms of an idea, just like, how do we do it? Well, we can't. Well, we've got to find a way to do it. So I think that, I think that sort of challenging the immediate response. Hey, let's do a walking at at. we can't. It's it, it's impossible. It's too heavy. It's too top heavy. It's not it's not a real thing. It's a fantasy thing. Yeah. Well, let's make it walk. The barge. No, no one will ever ship it. Everyone will wait for it to go on clearance. And well, let's do it a different way. Um, I think that I think that's it. Just and I think it's it's the connection with the community that I have always has always played a very important part in the process for me because. Uh, as I said at the beginning, when we started talking, I have my own opinions. I have my own loves. I have my own subjectivity, but subjectivity is dangerous. It can make you really, really good, but it can also ruin it because you're just only doing it for yourself. So I learned very quickly to go out to the fandom and the community and say, what do you reckon? What do you think? And sometimes I got in trouble for that, but uh, but ultimately checking gut i call it sanity checking sanity checking with people and just getting a measure was was probably the most important thing so i i guess sort of part of my design process is getting insight and getting just checking with other people that feel as strongly about it as me and then realizing that i could be wrong and like maybe that isn't a good choice so uh i think that's Is is there something that comes to mind if i say something that very much uh, like a position of yours that very much was changed by seeking that guidance, input, sort of opening your mind to others' thoughts on a direction. On I don't know whether I, I can't say, <laughs> but th- but there is something that came to your mind. Yeah, there's lots of things that I've gone. Yes, 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 yes. Check, check. Think. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> or or not the right time. Yeah, I can't say. I can't say. I'm but sorry. there is. But there is definitely. So, no, no, no. Well, there always is. People, yeah. people, people think. It's is. De- yeah. They they think because it- you know it certainly is you know the 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 process when looking at it from the outside to many people can seem very opaque and arbitrary, and certainly you've had uh, numerous uh, unfounded and weird aspersions cast on decisions that have been made. Yeah as as people who work at in any 
area that deal with fandom have over the years when it comes to these things because people are super passionate yeah. and are very subjective about the the very particular things they want personally out of a thing. Yeah. And absolutely. you're sort of in this unenviable position of like, well, how how do we make it for the most amount of people <laughs> who will be mostly happy with this how, thing? Yeah. How do we make it for the most amount of people? How do we make it for people that we want to introduce into this community? Because let's face it, we're getting older, right? Right. Um, 30 years time, I don't know whether I'm going to be around, but I would still want to be able to look at Star Wars. So I don't have to bring in the new generation. And so there's, there's a genuine concern about that today, yeah. about yeah. where a lot of toy lines sit and who are they for? Yeah. You know, who are the intended audience of this? Because, you know, certainly adults who are hyper passionate would be perfectly happy if it was just for them and yes. catered entirely to yes. them. And that's fine if Star Wars doesn't want to be around. Any, any brand, I'm not going to say Star Wars, any brand doesn't want to be around. You know, at so, what point it, is it avoiding a toy line becoming a collectible line? Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's hard. It's, it, it, it's not even hard. It's impossible. It's impossible. You can't with the, with you know, there's only finite number of items you can physically make. You can't always please everybody, so it's it's very difficult kind of get. And it's a portfolio. You know, okay, that's for that. That's for that. So let's, let's do, no, no, that's not the right time. Is that okay? You know, as Disney and and wants wants to tell a story, we've got to be very cognizant of that. Like when to release, when not to release. We'll hold it. We've got something coming up. Judge it. So it's really difficult. It's fascinating. It is really fascinating, but it's really hard. And I know got, fans are super patient. Yeah, and I've got <laughs> yeah, um, I've gotten my my skin's got reasonably thick because I've turned it into something that I I wouldn't say yeah, I'd say, um, enjoy is a strong word, but like respect at least. Like I, I've heard, I've said it many many times. Give me the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like give me the good praise, great, get it over with. You know, everyone likes a pat on the back, done. Okay, but yeah, it doesn't help me. Give me the bad. Like, what have I done wrong, or what is what can be improved? Give me lots of that because I need to make that better or try to make that better. And then the ugly is like uh, when it's personal. It's like, you don't know what you're doing this, and and, and I'm just, that's like I I can't accept the good and the bad without the ugly. It doesn't. That's why the phrase good, bad, the ugly. Um, it, you just have to accept it, and it's fine because at the end of the day, the vast majority of the fans love it as much as I do, and as much as any team that works on it does. And I'd much rather have that than not give a damn about it. Right. Than just go, it who cares? Like, I think I it's know. good that your presence out there and your interactivity sort of diffuses a lot of people's misconceptions and 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 pent up emotions when it comes to well, why why decisions get made, how yeah. decisions get made. You know what what is happening? What are the considerations that have to be juggled when it comes? Because we you know we're certainly living in a time. Because we were in the dark as kids, we didn't know how toy companies were run. We just knew that toys showed up, and you you hoped there was some cool ones in there. And if there weren't, you'd move on. You know, yeah. you'd, you'd choose something else, or something it, else it, would appear. It's interesting, especially you know today's age. Everything is about transparency, and you're able to find things out. You know, remember back in the day, if you didn't know how to do something, you couldn't go on the internet. You would just maybe have an Encyclopedia Britannica to kind of look up, or something like or that. Or that friend who like, would lie to you. Yeah, a friend that would tell you, I know what it does. My dad told me, and it's a load of rubbish. But um, there's this need to know and everything. And at the end of the day, we can't, any company can't tell you everything because it's just not the way it works. It's coming your entire sleep next year. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, this legality. <laughs> but that said, I always try and foster the approach of like engaging with people, especially when they're upset. You know, vast majority of the times, if I if someone comes to me and they're upset, a lot of the times it's just like, I just want you to hear me. I just want you to hear me and respect my point of view. And that doesn't cost anything. And it doesn't mean you have to give anything away. It doesn't mean you have to promise them what they're going to get. But I've the vast majority of times when people come up with me, up come up to me in San Diego or online and they're like, rah, 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 rah. you go, what's hey, what's wrong? Tell me about it. Like what what do you mean? Help me understand. And then I'll try and give them, well, the reason is this, but I can't tell you more about that. And most of the time they're like, oh, you know what? Thanks. I appreciate that. Just the, I mean, it's it's common human nature. Just people want to be listened to, want right. to be heard and listened to and acknowledged. And that's all it is. The vast majority of that is all it is. So I'm, I would like to be treated like that. So that's how I try and do that. Well, you were very good. That engagement and, uh, for everyone watching this <laughs> who doesn't subscribe to you on Instagram, 
uh, or on YouTube because you're going to be doing more of your tall toy tales. I'm going to keep doing Shut that. Off. Just to, yeah. <laughs> you say force five ten times, and I'll say. <laughs> no, because my mind's more like to swear. Yours isn't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they definitely should uh, follow you because it is you know your your engagement is fun. Uh, bottom line, it's fun. Thank you. Appreciate it. So yeah. uh, I mean. I gotta have fun, and I love my career. It's like, yeah, and, and you may not know it because you know I decided arbitrarily to like, oh yeah, I'll do a Star Wars figure show. I could very easily have done Marvel or many other things. Uh, you know, as yeah, right as I shared with folks, I actually brought over here the little custom I did as a kid. Look at that, look at that felt Secret Wars. Oh yeah, look at look at that childhood stitching. That's cool. Did it with a crochet needle. I love I it. Nine years old. Oh, yeah. Oh, way too thick, way too long uh, needle. Also, felt not really good for thread. No. Nah. So that was fun. Oh, and uh, just colored tape. I love for it. For his buckle. I love it. Now, would you throw it, ever throw it away? Would you sell it? No, you'll keep it because it yeah, means. No. I mean, when I was a kid, because I uh, shared, uh, people can go look at that TikTok. I had that Secret Wars figure and was disappointed. Because that wasn't the doom from the comics. You want the doom from the comics. And so felt the was doom. the way to go. So you got the doom from the comics. That's yeah. cool. Because you do customization. I do. I, I dabble. Yeah, I dabble. Yeah. I do so a little... what, what leads you towards a, a need to customize any particular thing? What are the things that strike you? as like, oh, this is the threshold for <laughs> wanting to well, customize. Well, I'm doing on three levels. Well, my plan's doing on three levels. First phase level phase i've done is the sort of like kit bashing you're working out of chop things off boil and pop and put them on and repaint and i've done like <clears throat> metal ceremony luke i've done some kind of weird things um uh i'm looking at my han stormtrooper so i've enjoyed doing that and now i'm sort of trying to play around with i actually haven't touched it for a few weeks like silicon molding and and kind of that's a big step up kind of doing that and then eventually <laughs> want to get to like 3d z brush and outputting 3d printing and that says why do i want to do it sanity just just craft just using my hands more than just on a computer i'm not i'm decent painter because i have graphic design and i can draw but i'm not brilliant I'm not brilliant but like plastics and stuff never done in my life never done it so i'm like i want to appreciate what this means and like i know how this manufactures now I want to do it for myself to feel what it feels like to do it and the frustrations. And I've already had things where I'm like, that doesn't bloody work. Oh, I've got the mix wrong. Oh, it's gone everywhere. Oh, the flashing is terrible. <laughs> I, want to, I want to feel it. I want to feel it. I want to feel everything. So so what uh, is the threshold then for you deciding what is a project that like, uh, uh, what is the wish fulfillment uh, of? What usually what's doing. missing. What's missing in there? Like I did a, a, a custom um, Superpowers jor just because I looked at, I had, I had, I had Luke, I had Clark, <laughs> I had Superman, you know, Kal El, and I was like, I really want a Jor El, and I saw someone did it online, and it's really nice. I was like, I'm gonna do that because it's gonna test me because it's all white. So like number one, like cleanliness and getting it all crisp white. So I did that, and I really liked it. It was really cool. So yeah, it's just filling, filling, filling holes. So talk about you sort of guiding that filling holes thing with uh the fact that we finally have a retro tarkin figure yes that was uh, that was another one of <laughs> I wouldn't say my, no, no I, I remember being in the room saying we should do classic star wars figures like retro like proper retro kenner ones and they'll go yeah we could redo the figures and i was like yeah but i want to do some new figures like I need a talking, we need a Luke ceremony, we need a sand trooper, we need all these other kind of there's a few of them. Like I want a rebel fleet. So and I then mean, I, I bought my first um, one recently just because I saw it online. I uh maker, I think Stan Solo did the Hudson yeah. Slayer Leia. Yeah, some of them are brilliant. That's like, injection molded. Yeah. Like you know, I, I was expecting like a resin print. Because that yeah. technology yeah. astounds me. Like the, I don't know if you follow. Uh, there's a maker called. Uh, we were talking about people who get super specific with collections. Uh, Mighty Jabba. No, not that I. You you have to do a deep dive into Mighty now. Jabba on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. Okay. Uh. So. <laughs> so everything associated with Jabba's palace, Jabba and Jabba's palace, 
but he's been doing I... 3D printing. So he did like a jumbo 3D print of the Kenner Java in the gentle giant jumbo size. Wow. He uh but then he took it further and is like, can I do like a life size 3D print <laughs> of Java? And this thing, and he did it in his basement and he glued it together. So forever in his basement is going to be because that's what, like 10 feet long? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like got, a yeah. you, you, so you see the bottom layer as he's gluing it together. It's like a, a child's swimming pool in his basement. Well, I'm gonna check that out. My as he's God, building up the layers on this thing. It is it is astonishing. He just, he just did a 3D print of a uh jumbo size size noodles. And did the full paint up, That's so that cool. I I know that having a three D printer would be a slippery slope for me. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to learn that. <laughs> I'd like to because then you can do anything. Because I get frustrated when I can't quite pull it off. I can't quite get it want... exactly right. Like do, like Luke's like the uh, I did the medal ceremony, Luke, and I used Han Bespin jacket, and I tried to I had to sort of rub off a lot of his pockets he's got three he's got four pockets i take off three but i leave the flap on the top for luke's kind of yellow outfit but it's like it wasn't perfect so i do it and i'm like ah i'm a typical artist like most designers like once you finish your thing hate it like hate it so like i, I don't think i've ever done something i've gone that's brilliant look do at you that. keep returning to a project and keep tweaking it or do you have no, a start point no. of like this is what it's going to be in this no, yeah i have to leave it i have to because i'll ruin it I've done it too many times where you go back. If you if you draw something or paint something, you do it too much. It just ruins. I was telling my daughter that she's she's good at really good at art, and she was doing stuff. And I was like, leave it alone. Just just leave it. It's never you never. It's gonna get under your skin. That's, do a new that's one. Anyway. Do a new one. Ah, uh, yeah. So learn learn and move on. Right. What you... Yes. Oh, I'm stressed <laughs> out now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, how stressed are you going to be going to your number one choice then? This one was easy. Well, blah, blah, blah. it was easy. No, it was easy. It's the only one I can choose. It has to be the one I choose because it's my first figure. It's my first figure I ever got um, when I came back from holiday, and I was living in Malden, which is an old sleepy town in Essex. Which actually, what did I learn a fact about Malden? Oh, it's where Captain Britain was born <laughs> in, in the Marvel Universe. Captain Britain, you know, uh, what's his name? Brian, Brian Braddock. Braddock. He was born in Malden. I lived in Malden. My dad used to have a restaurant called Francine's, which is my mum's name. And I, we lived above the restaurant in this little apartment when I was about four or five. We went on holiday, came back. <clears throat> and there was, a, there was a toy shop on Malden High Street, Main Street. And it was above a bike shop. So you go into the bike. I could see it. It's so weird. Like, it, it's a bike shop. There's all these bikes. They're all spiky, you know, with all the handlebars. And I remember as a little kid going, oh, I don't want to get hit. And there was steps that went up at the back of the store, dog legged round, went up and upstairs was this really low ceiling toy shop, really small. You walked in, the counter was on the left and all the toys, it wasn't massive, but I remember on the right at the bottom, I think I remember on the right at the bottom was Star Wars figures. And that was the moment where I said to my mom, mommy, mommy, these are the, these are the, um, I can't remember, I didn't say characters. These are the men from that, that film, Star Wars, we saw. I said, look, they're the toys. I like these. And, and I think, well, there were 50 pence in, that, in those days. And she was like, well, would you like to choose one? Why don't you have one? So it was like, it was probably the first 12. So I had this first 12 kind of laid Your out. first time having to rank Star Wars. And I was like, <laughs> which one do I get? And now most people would say, ah, oh, he's going to pick up Luke. He's going to pick up Vader or Stormtrooper. But I guess I'm a bit like a magpie because I can't resist vac metal. I can't resist silver. So my first, my first ever Star Wars figure and my number one Star Wars figure ever made, ever produced is R2-D2. Um, R2-D2. And I, I still love him today. And I, what I can't, I remember as a kid being absolutely fascinated with the click and the reverse click. So when you turn it around, there's obviously a bit of pom in the, um, plastic in there that gets twang, 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 and it's quite clicky. But when you turn it the other way, it has a slightly echoey. You probably can't hear this. Yeah, it's more a duller. It, it has a sort of almost like hair. You know, when you, you sort of pull your hair out, it sort of like goes. 
It's like that. And I remember as a kid being fascinated. And it was just it's more of a Hanna Barbera cartoon sound. Yeah, shiny. And he was little. And I know 3PO had more back, but he was my first one. So I love R2 and I love the character and the fact that he's sort of like the heart of the, the movie. And I also remember as a kid going, that doesn't look like it does on the on the movie. Like these three little eyes. It looks like a little bird. Yeah, that picture that's right next to him on yeah, that package. I was like, I was like, I always remember as a kid going, he's got like a funny little face. I, I always remember looking, oh, he's got a face. Whereas on the movie, he didn't to me, he didn't have a face. But as a little kid, I was fascinated with this. So I think you know, R2 is was probably my number one. I have stated recently, I'm out of focus. I have stated recently that my other favorite character, I'm gonna do an honorary mention, is Hammerhead. Like this figure, in terms of sculpting, Please, Mama Nadon, um, <laughs> Hammerhead, <laughs> <laughs> Hammerhead. Um, I love this one, and again, I love this because I used to be able to. My finger's a bit fat now. I used to be able to jam my finger in there as a kid. I used to like just hold it with my finger jammed <laughs> in the back of his neck, and it just used to be like a comforter. But I just love the sculpt on that. Bearing in mind, you know, the the era that was sculpted with the veins and all that kind of stuff, and the side eye. You know, the fact that he has a he's like looking off to the side he's to love so and he was weird and wonderful you know similar to like you know it's a kind of like a mirror there but like i think in terms of meaning it has to be my first Wars figure which was r2 that's my number one ken r2 so, so you talk about that the sort of allure of the vac metalization process mm. uh it, it was very surprising and delightful to see that the the new retro c-3po coming out yes i turned to vac metal i uh i did speak to chris about that i went and saw chris rife who does all that now i was like so what's next what you doing with the vintage what you doing with the retro and he's like oh we're doing this you know r2 and 3po and i was like it's vac right and he's like yeah because <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's difficult it's not a nice process it's not a healthy process to do back mailing. There's a lot of byproducts and it's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. And, yeah, and it also is you know, not the, the most durable on a figure either yeah, for yeah. anyone who has those vintage figures. Yeah. So, yeah. But do, boy, does it pop. Now, like, this is like 40 odd years old and it's like so shiny. So is that your original R2? No, no. My so that Andrew also went too. Andrew and Christopher probably burnt it. So you say, so you know what happened to them. Was there a point where you asked them to go like, do you still have my old figures? Is no, because that... I saw that they burnt them all. <laughs> I used to babysit them. So I, I remember going, I gave them a whole box full. I just said, here's my Star Wars stuff. And they had, they had uh, real Ghostbusters, Thundercats. That was that era. So sort of like 86. Six, seven, eight, six, seven. So they had a whole load of toys. They had loads of toys. They were the kids that every, that had all the toys. Have you talked to them since? Have you been in contact? Uh, <laughs> I I haven't spoken to them for years. I know where they are. One one runs a vineyard in like <laughs> something like that. Weird. Andrew, I think, does. What if they uh, still had one of your originals? It's a good question. I don't know. Because they, they made, you know, we all we all him. did that with toys. But look at that Indiana Jones. He, you know, he's banged up, has no thumb, but I still have him. So I should ask. I've never. You asked are that doing much. another season of Tall Toy Tales. I so got a maybe, well, maybe I should hunt that down. Ken, that's a brilliant idea. You get no commission. <laughs> you get no commission. You never, get zero percent of zero dollars. Didn't ask. Don't need it. It's Happy interesting because I'm, I'm I'm talking to someone. Uh, we have friends in in Halifax in Canada. And their kid, when they came over, they visited us in England when I was 16. I was big into Batman, 1989, Tim Burton Batman. And I was into drawing. So I drew this picture of Batman, which I was really proud of. It's pencil. I spent hours and hours shading it all in. And I gave it to the little kid because he he was like 10. No, he's the yes now. We snuck him into, snuck because it was a 12A or something, I think, in England. No, we snuck <laughs> him into the cinema because he looked older. And I gave him this picture of Batman that I drew. And by all accounts, he still has it. I keep talking to his mum because I don't know where I don't know him that well. But I'm like, can you ask Jay to like, can I have that back or at least take a photograph of it? And I'm guaranteed I'll look at it and go, oh, God, it's useless. <laughs> but yeah, I will. That's a good idea, Ken. I will ask Andrew and Christopher. Or because you you've that. told the story so many times as far as them, like it'd be curious to hear their point of view on their memories of playing with those <laughs> gifted Star Wars figures. They'll they'll probably say he didn't give it to us. He made us buy them buy them off him. He's such a <laughs> such a cutthroat. He was horrible. <laughs> 
but uh, I will ask that question. I, I know I know that I speak to their dad quite a lot, so I'll 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 give them a shout and say, hey, they got any of those left? If they offered you any back, would you take them up on it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh god, yeah, I would. I so would. We still we still we still have the R two. That would be cool. <laughs> now you got me thinking. All right, when I finish, I'm gonna jump on. <laughs> Send him a note, and it's gonna be like it's gonna be like half past ten at night in England. Yeah. Like, what the hell is this? Like, like, you're me? really reaching out to me about this? Yeah, I have a vineyard. I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, an no, adult no. thing. Yeah. Uh, so, so, as far as you're collecting now, you you finished the original run of Kenner. I yes, mean, I haven't got a I haven't got a vinyl Jawa. It's the only thing. I'm just too nervous about getting a fake one. And I cannot afford to buy a carded one to open. I think even that's too much for me. That would be the only way I could get it. So you befriend Richard do. Marks and you get uh, one of one of one of the, the vinyl Jawas out of his collection. That's what I need. I need someone I need someone with um Providence. Pro, pro, no, what's the word? It is Providence. Pro, isn't it? Provenance. Provenance, thank you. Providence is where that's Providence. <laughs> getting late you know <laughs> past my bedtime so I was five uh yeah so a vinyl joe would be cool but i can't take that risk but um i'm i'm kind of getting into a little bit of real ghostbusters i'm kind of looking historically at like what are the best lines ever made and like i was too old to play with real ghostbusters but i had a great i have a great massive respect for that toy line and what it did and the the, the fun it had and andrew and christopher had I've got it. Where is it? I've got the, you know, I've got a lot. Of, I've got the the firehouse. I remember that firehouse well. I remember oh, I'm looking at more that of that slime into that firehouse. Yeah, many so times. I'm looking at more of those. Um, Smurfs. I mean, I've kind of finished my Smurfs village. Yeah, well, I, but I put an, a Smurf Easter egg in the background for you if you can find it. Can't see. I put a I put a Smurf and I put an ET. <laughs> This is great content. Me looking at you, going. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I can't see. I'm too blurry, and I haven't got my glasses. This is such a weird distance for me. I can't even see it. So at the end of the show, I'll point right. out where they okay. are. I can uh, see ET. Yeah, I've got ET. I've got that one up there. Yeah, I've got the same one there. I can see him on Jabba's diet. You got the ET. You, got the ET. you, you can't see. You spotted the ET. Where the hell's the Smurf? I even made it easier for you. Oh. <laughs> What would be the easiest Smurf to see at a distance that you would readily clock? I don't know. Not the black, not the angry one. Papa Smurf. Where's Papa Smurf? He's going to be red. No, I don't know. I give up. Show me where it is because I'm going to make it look silly. Papa What's that Smurf, down? Papa Smurf is standing right in front of E.T. Oh, I can't see that. <laughs> I can't see that. The red, the red of the hat in his arm crease, and then the white of his beard is, and then the the the. the I didn't the say it was an up. easy game. Oh, but right. I did place. I did place. Thank you, man. Specifically you. for. I, I couldn't see that. If ever, if anyone else can see Papa Smurf, please uh, send any <laughs> postcards. <laughs> uh, and now you can find Brainy. Uh, so what then? Of things that have never been produced, what is your sort of holy grail? If you had the ability to go, this is the thing. No market concerns, no no concerns oh. other than this is just the thing I want to see on oh, my shelf. God, I got, I got, I got a list as long as you're on. I, I I did something recently where it's like, okay, like I love Asterix, like I want. I want all the characters, Asterix, proper cartoon. They've never done like a modern oh. line. No, the Asterix, new right? I've got, I'll grab one here, <clears throat> which is really nice. They're really good. Um, French company called Lance in 2008 did an Asterix line, cartoon line for the movie. So the movies that they do, they've done animation and CG, but it was a live action movie, Asterix and the Olympic Games, I believe it was, whatever that is in French. And um, they did comic ones of Asterix, Obelix, Get a Fix, and a couple of Legionnaires. I've got those, I absolutely got them, I love Asterix. But I would, I would love to do uh, a sort of four and a half inch line of Asterix figures. <laughs> of all the characters um i'm looking I, at the asterix i picked up in london when i was there at the tintin shop oh yeah 
nice. All I just the character design, Goskini and Underzo, who did that, was just uh, it's just brilliant. Um, I like that. There's a load of old British kids shows that I would love figures for Banana Man, a proper Paddington Bear, Rupert Bear, just weird stuff like that. Um, I would love. I, I, we spoke about it earlier. Like, where was the 1978 Superman movie figure line? Where was it? Like, and I've got, I had a friend who did, who did a. I keep getting up now. I hope that's all yeah. yeah, you have a beautiful custom. I have, yeah. Chris, my friend Chris did this custom. I mean, that's just. Kenner esque Christopher Reeve. He did a great job. I mean, he's got a Batman one, Keaton. As well, that I've got that's just brilliant. Um, so like, and on the back, he's yeah, got all like, of them. yeah, oh, the to, have, to have that, that Lois and that Lex <sighs> with a male away, with a male away Zod sort of trailing in Superman 2. That would be brilliant. I would love that. Um, also, to be fair, yeah. the next male away probably would have been an Otis, like Otis seems like he'd yeah. be a male away oh, character, Otis, yeah. Can you imagine that would be wicked? So uh, that I would do that. I would love. Um, I wish Kenna kept the. God, why am I focus? I wish Kenna kept the indie license and kind of did Doom and Crusade, and it didn't didn't go to um, LJN. I always get that mixed up whether it's LJN or JLN. I think it's JLN, LJN, whichever, right? Yeah, whichever way around it is. Uh, I love that. It's a load of stuff. God, it's a load of stuff. Dungeons and Dragons, Lord of the Rings. I want, I like, look, I click Lord of the Rings, the back sheet, 1978 movie stuff. That's so expensive. I'd That's such a do. limited line. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I keep, I can get them all. It's just that I don't have 12 grand <laughs> loose <laughs> sitting around. So you just, you just keep checking back in on those eBay auctions to see that they haven't sold yet. Well, it's, listen, everyone, everyone does it. It's like this. Focus. It's like, you do a search for like cartoon wizard because hopefully someone <laughs> doesn't know what it is. And they just go, it's just a car. It's just a wizard figure. And they put it out there and they want like 20 bucks for it. And you go, yeah. But now everyone knows. Yeah. What it or, is. or just a lot. Of yeah. Miscellaneous. Yeah. Seventies, eighties toys, action figures. Most of them are like priced ridiculous that you go, what? It's like, Oh, these are rare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so there's there's tons of stuff. It's endless. I could I could I could set up my own toy company and make retro figures for the rest of my dying day. Maybe I'll do that when I retire. <laughs> when I retire, I'll. Uh... Okay, so what are you've named two of them? What are the the five films that you would pick in your retro line to focus on? Well, assuming the original Superman. Original Super movies. I would go back and do Tron. I would love to do more on Tron, Superman. Lord of the Rings, Bakshi, Indiana Jones stuff, I guess. No, that's too old. Oh, movies, 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 movies. And we'll go out to TV E.T. Shows. E TV like, shows. where's E.T. I would do? Like, like I, I know they, I know we've With had your a troop builder NASA agents. Maybe, yeah. The I don't hazmat know. suit agents. Yeah, they've done, I mean, they've done figures, but they've always, I don't know. It's, something missing i'd like to have from like et just to, i don't know what it, i can't and i can't articulate whether it was scale or is it is it for you the figure the packaging or the combination of the two that is the most evocative and what you really want to well, when it's see? retro stuff it's both like et i mean that design the e and the the e and the t in et and on <laughs> that purple that sort of lilac, almost lilac weird. It's like a horrible purple on that black. It's eighties. Yeah, it's. I, just... I had I had my ET wallet was that color. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's white actually on the on on the food stuff, but like that purple, I love. Yeah, so that would be. The packaging is important to me as well. I know a lot of people don't believe that because I rip it open, but being a Graphic you still designer, save it. I mean, you still save your cards, even if you rip the thing off, right? Yeah, usually, but I, they're usually ripped. But yeah. then that's, that's, I like that. I like the juxtaposition of the tear, seeing which, where it tears it off. I've got some. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the figures in the in the packaging. But, yeah, retro stuff I do like. Well, I'm I sure know. there are other movies that I'm 
that you probably, people are pretty screaming at the, sc- at the screen going, what about this, you idiot? <laughs> yeah, at the moment, I can't. Well, well, obviously, when you were asking specifically about movies, so are the TV shows come to mind as ones you'd like to see? Yeah, a lot of them are the British ones. I've, I actually did a post, and I, I can't even jog my own memory. You know, Banana Man, Mo- The Amazing Adventures of Morph. Now, that's a deep cut, especially in America. I don't think it ever came out over here, but there was a... So everyone knows Ardman. So Ardman Animation, you know, Wallace and Gromit, Chicken Morph Mike. was their very Morph first was character. their first kind of proper regular gig they're out in they're down in bath or just outside bath where i used to work with a design company down there they do a lot of work for arden so i never met the team never met nick park but like it, i was also kind of indirectly connected with people that worked with him and so morph was uh a little plasticine character with a whole rock with a whole family that interacted with a live action host of this um, TV show called Take Heart. He was an artist and he would teach kids on the TV how to draw, how to do paintings, and he would explain it and break it down. And then there'd be a little interstitial where he would, there was like a little pencil box and he would be talking and it would go, bah, 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 bah. and he'd be, what's wrong, Morph? And then it would cut to Morph and it would be stop animation, clay, claymation. And he would come up and go, bah, 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 bah. and it was just, br- it was just brilliant. And they had a, they had, it was like a 20 minute Take Heart show about learning how to do art but then there was an offshoot a five minute show called the amazing adventures of morph which is all about morph and his family and they lived under the table and i would do a, I would do a toy line on the amazing adventures of morph in a heartbeat it's basically the uk equivalent of gumby for folks yes i guess so yeah but it's the simplest of designs but the energy of yeah everyone google the amazing adventures of morph m-o-r-p-h and you will see what I mean. It is it was genius animation in like early eighties, mid eighties. So there's the figure line based on that. I've actually I've got I've got I'm going back. they just released morph? I've got one model of morph and it's a it's like a polystone. And uh I that that's morph. Yeah, just the the simplest of designs, but so appealing. That's it. He's brilliant. I love it. <clears throat> And they've never really done as far as like a, they'd never done a proper like modern Danger Mouse or Count Duckula or any of those. No, I looked I look at the Danger Mouse one. They did one reasonably recently, but they in my mind the, the expression of Danger Mouse was off. He was too angry. I looking at it, because I like Danger Mouse. I like Danger Mouse and Penfold and all that. Um Mr. Man. Something else, actually, as I walk past the Mr. Man, I would do a modern line or a retro line. I've got like little models of these. So these are every person in Britain knows what these are. These are like our these were, our childhoods were built on this early reading little short story books um, written by a guy called Roger Hargreaves, who I actually went with his son, his son Adam. When Roger died, um, Adam took over the drawings, and they're very simple drawings, very geometrical. And he I remember he used to draw with black pen on like blotting paper, not but not blotting like cartridge paper. Uh, when I used to work at the my first job, when I did posters and things, I also did stationery and greetings cards for this company. And we had the Mr. Men license. And I remember Adam coming in and we'd sit with him and we'd say, OK, we want Mr. Strong holding up a big, I'm making this up, big bouquet of flowers for Valentine's. And he would sit there and he would draw it for us on this sketch pad. And we would take it and we'd scan it in. In the old days, we'd get it professionally scanned, <laughs> but it would bleed. It would ble- the the pen would bleed on this sort of rough paper, and I kept saying we kept saying to him, Adam, can you draw it on like smooth paper? And he was like, No, my dad drew it on this paper. I'm drawing it on this paper, and we we're like, Ah, oh, yeah, but it doesn't scan very well. He goes, Doesn't matter. That's how you get it. <laughs> so, <he> just- <laughs> but Mister Man would be a brilliant. brilliant- Everyone doesn't know they they were characters who represented basic emotions and concepts. Yeah, it was Mr. Happy, Mr. Sad, Mr. Daydream. And my son, Sam, has got the whole set upstairs because it's a very quick read. It's a very, it's like a four minute read. And when you've got kids and you want them to go to bed, but they want a story, you want to pick the short stories. <laughs> so the Mr. Men, if you don't know the Mr. Men, everyone, Google Mr. Men and you will find so it. Little sounds Mr. Like Mr. That Men is the in the next series of Tall Toy Tales. Is that yeah, going to be the What's It's episode? You need to do Maybe there's a short this? one. Yeah, maybe there's a short one. Yeah, that's that, and it's the Wombles. I, I could, yeah, we've been talking like an hour, to, hour and a half already, but like I could do the Wombles. 
I was raggy born, dolls. I was born in the wind. Look at you. Did you just say the raggy dolls? I did. My friend wrote the theme song for raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Yeah. Raggy dolls. Neil Innes. Like Monty Python me. and raggy yeah. Dolls. Oh, that's fascinating. So, I love I love soundtracks and I love theme tunes and things. So like, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's a I'll catchy you know, theme song. Yeah, I hum the Raggy Dolls. Really, I'll listen to that. Really I'll listen really. to Magpie. I'll listen to... Oh, look at you. That's cool. <laughs> oh, well, we need another You need another YouTube thing where it's all like British kids TV. And... Yeah, if anyone hasn't heard the Magpie theme, go rectify that because that is... I can't hum. I, I can hear it, but I can't hum it. I can't... It is pure uh, 70s. I remember the guy with the long curly hair. He had like a Kevin Keegan hairstyle. What was his name? Who hosted it? Uh, and what's the other one that... Uh, this oh, Now it's just in the back of my head. Now it's Magpie is shoving it to the side. <laughs> you ought to... If you know, you hum the Magpie theme. Oh, Play Away. Play Away also oh, has a great theme Play Away. I'm a bird. I'm a bird. What kind of bird am I? Did it it? P L A. Great theme. Play, 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 play away. Play away. Play away. Play away. Play away. I'm a bird. I'm a bird. What kind of bird am I? <laughs> Didn't think it would go to this place, did you? No. This is great. This is fantastic. <laughs> I, I all that kids. That's what I'll do when I retire. I'm going to retire. I'm going to set up my own British kids '70s and '80s retro toy line. I'll be able to pick up the licenses for pittance because yeah. no one will know what they are. Pick up the licenses now before this releases and everyone <laughs> goes, yeah, yeah, we should. I would do that. I'd do that. Uh, so I, do uh, you have any other honorable mentions before? Because I have a few things that I'll I'll share no. of recent things. No. This Maybe this good. will spur some stuff on. So I, I've recently talked to people about how much I love the uh, early to mid 2000s star wars line just because of how deep a dive it went into yeah, super yeah. specific moments <clears throat> like little yeah. little tiny sections and i i recently talked about the uh -huh. luke in the back to tank from echo base and just yeah i mean as far as a super specific figure release you're not gonna ask me about the funeral pyre are you because i'm not talking about it <laughs> i'm not gonna say anything <laughs> right now uh but along these lines of super specific Luke gets a lot of them. Uh, I I found that this existed, and I had to get this. And let me take this out of the case that the seller sent it in. So this is Luke Skywalker on Dagobah, but it is handstand Luke Skywalker on Dagobah. Does he come with a free rock? I can't remember. I can't see what it's So got. he doesn't come with the rock. He comes ah. with a little base that has the handprints as the stand to put him in but then you're like well i and he's not labeled as like handstand luke he's just the luke skywalker so number one in this original trilogy collection wow. wave so you're like okay so that's really super specific can i have like yeah. a regular luke out of it and you find out oh he has swappable arms and a head so i i can get regular luke right oh that's good but you don't get quite regular luke you get another super specific Luke of his arms are in the carrying position because uh, he comes with the bag for Yoda. But don't worry. In those days, they would just make another version with his hands slightly. So he off. comes with the non-dangly hair head. Yeah. But look at those handstand. It's crazy. That yeah. sort of stop in the name of love hands. I think it was like super pose. I always remember the Obi-Wan Kenobi was like, Oh yeah, he uh like that. Well those power yeah, of the force yeah, right <laughs> and gotta yeah. come with a even though he's the spirit, gotta come with a lightsaber. Every I spoke, you know, I spoke to Mark, I spoke to Mark a lot when when he was talking about when he introduced Power of the Force 2, you know, in like ninety five. And it was all for, like muscle, muscle Luke. When that came back, when that hit Toys R Us in, in England, bear in mind there was only about four Toys R Us's in England, it was like a big thing. I was like, oh, Star Wars is back. I've been collecting all the old stuff, but now this new stuff. So I talked to Mark about that and and this stuff in the sort of early 2000s, the noughties, where everything was like specific and posed for action. Oh, yeah, like that Vader. Like, he's got everything was in motion. In, yeah, everything was in motion. Everything was in motion. And like, which, you know, led you to great posability, but like these weird kind of like planes of movement. Yeah, it's like it's that is the one pose. 
yeah. that is the pose totally. that they're gonna hold that doesn't look like something seriously is going wrong yeah and then like, when we got when we got onto it it went back to like three four five points of articulation but it was more sort of dead pose but like detailed sculpts and it's weird oh, yeah. how it changes it's weird how it changes so love that era everyone investigate the hyper specific era uh mm. but this just arrived today so i figured uh i would open it good this episode Let him so, so i'm going to show the original version of this so we oh, have the, oh, the original you got, Vader. Know, yeah cool and what i love about this retro collection release which we'll see better when it's actually out of the package was that it takes the idea of that classic vader and it's like well what would you do if kenner actually did upgrade the figure yeah as the line went on instead of it being like the first release of vader and this, which and stayed without the entire line and this is the best one because they upgraded everything else like luke went to went from telescoping to holding and and jedi obviously soft yes the like, vader you got they... in return of the jedi is the exact same vader yeah, you got that weird. first wave that's interesting, uh, interesting fun fact. I, I don't know whether they did it on the one that you're going to open, but the retro line that came out recently with the first six were all scanned from my figures here. Oh, really? They, yeah, because they were like, we got to get some like really good quality ones. And I was like, I got some really Steve's good quality. got the best ones. quality. So they scanned them, yeah. But, uh, but so I don't know open whether... this up. This is, yeah, the, this is the Obi-Wan Kenobi retro release. Now, I don't tear it open like you do, but I am an opener. So here's what I do because oh, I oh, I love I like the card back art. Okay. So what I will do is I'll put this uh, letter opener inside the bubble. I I'm going to do the same as I, I and and I will <laughs> yeah I will make the turn, and if you can see, follow the outside of it. I can hear the figure inside going, but is it really worth it? <laughs> and the answer always is no. I mean. <laughs> But it makes me feel good. That's what that's what it's it. all about. So, you get like a little satisfaction from that. And then Surgical. Then I will once that has been separated from the outside, just saw along the inside. But to your and people should go to your recently revised store, right? Where you offer t shirts and things like that. You have yeah, to I'm, let I'm, them breathe. I'm trying to yeah, I'm playing around with it at the moment. I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna announce it in a few days. So I have a nice card back. Yeah, nice. Pretty good. But I'm going to toss that aside now. <laughs> I saw someone catch it off the, off the screen. Yeah, it's been very oh, yeah. awkward for oh, them. Yeah, the floor. They, they've been standing very quietly. So the first thing that this thing does, which, you know, that original line had the stuck in the arm mm. lightsaber mm. to extend out. But this goes with the later in the line handheld yeah saber is it the same but, color oh i assume it's the same color is it the guys got the same potency of like uh, it is, little... yeah I, well you know what this one's probably a little bit lighter not yeah. as dense it's cool uh the saturation's a little bit down on the but they like this how's that sound is that at least a little bit uh, yeah yeah gotta be crispy but so they changed the sculpt. Oh, they to, did. To it, like Ben legs. The uh, the fact that he was just spindly legs and didn't address ah, the fact that cool. he had the lower cloth. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, so it feels very much like uh, you know an emperor figure from that period yeah. or Anakin, uh, ghost nice. Anakin as it should. But and the cloth cape. Well, the good news is obviously you've got that nice Vader helmet which traps that. Soft goods nicely at the back to stop yes. it riding up. So it, 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 yeah, so it it drapes nicely. Yeah, and he's got the red lenses. Yeah, that's cool. I like eyes. That. Yeah. So as far as an upgrade goes, nice. Kudos to sort of doing you know evolving the retro line to show what an evolution. Nice one, team. What well on Chris have been so. Shout out to them. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, he's having uh, fun. With it. So everyone, go go buy those retro ones uh next to the last thing i don't know if you you've seen this i think you've mentioned this before <clears throat> the guide to kenner action figures that recently came out this is just the guy because i don't have it the actual nice book that red five designs did but they did send 
this guide to identifying the classic card backs. Oh, which if you cool. collected is often a nightmare to do with the yeah. various permutations of what yes. offer stickers were on there, what figures were on the back. So basically this is all laid oh, out to like, cool. well, if it has this sticker on it, turn to page 17. And oh, eventually you'll go through the entire process and winnow down. And exactly it's just all on card backs, all yeah. the different permutations of, of the, card the original backs. Kenner. That's cool. I haven't seen that. That's wicked. So as a handheld guide of everyone curious about identifying exactly and for me just looking at the art just looking and seeing the photography and yeah. and all the different versions that's, of where, that's where i get nervous it's like i know a lot of people kind of get into the different back hard backs where there's tri logo different countries of distribution different countries of manufacture whether it's hong kong or japan it's like I get, I'm like, I can't, I can't, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't I mean, there's that. so many, you know, did it, did it, it, is it a tri logo? Is it the single logo? Did it have this you specific offer? Cards. Like weird stuff like that. It's what crazy. was the expiration date on this offer? Is it yeah. because it was extended? What's different on this? So that, it's nice to have a guy. I'm not, again, an on card person, cool. but out. it's still fun as a thing. Mm. And I bought a playset, and I don't know if this is from your era. I think it might be, but this was a surprise I had recently. So I got this play set. Huh, yeah, cool. That and was that was just as I was leaving the team. I mean, Sam was working on that. I remember seeing the models for it and talking to him about you know, how much do you need for it to be a thing. And I got a surprise from this. Because mm. I came home with this and I was like, this is this is really neat. This is the Bestman play set. And then I looked at it and I was like, Something about looking at the picture has seemed a little weird to me every time I see it. And that's when I then noticed, and it was pointed out, that it's one half of the full display. And to do the full display of the carbon freezing chamber... You gotta get the other one. You gotta get a second one. There you <laughs> so, go. Because this goes into my toy OCD. Uh, you can't have half. I mean, you couldn't just freeze them in a half tube. It looks weird to have a drop off there. So I just want to put this as a cautionary tale for anyone else looking at these. But you got to get two of the sets to make a full set. Sometimes you do. I, I don't know what to say uh, about it. <laughs> so shout out to the star, the current Star Wars team as well. Uh, although that it seems like a fading era for doing play sets too. I mean, now with the line, because that's not something that the Marvel line has ever really dealt with because it's always been Marvel's a legend like, scale. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, we do play sets for like the, the younger, the smaller kind of kids or the younger kids line. Uh, I think Marvel and Star Wars are, are Marvel's are very character specific character centric at 8000 different characters there are some kind of key vehicles whether it is you know Johnny's hell charger or the bikes or like the heli the, the quinjet or blackbird or that sort of stuff but it's not like star wars star wars is star wars is characters getting in a vehicle going to a world for a fight so you get all that much it's more very star specific wars. places and yeah. environments yeah and marvel's not not quite and most of it's more sort of in real world so yeah there's 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 less there's less opportunity for sort of vehicles and places in marvel for sure well uh having gone deep dive into the marvel lines uh it is a joy to see the range of characters i never thought when you know reading those she hulk comics in the late 80s <laughs> that i'd be getting a razorback they look specifically like that yeah I mean, i'm pretty close to the release of the disney plus mcu she hulk series so start creating those old john byrne comics with that i was waiting for whether you were saying he's raised back in it but no it's like uh <laughs> listen uh you know i hey I, I, I would never ask that no good i'm guy, in the no, industry I, I as well never i would never I, ask that I and i know never you'd tell. never tell no, so it's like that my Marvel story was sort of like very 90s. I was into like, I got into comics in like 1991 when it was like 
the rock stars, you know, Jim Lee, Liefeld, McFarlane, all those kind of things, when it was X-Men. The cusp of image. My good, yeah, exactly. Wildcats and all that kind of stuff. And I've got a lot of the, I used to click Guardians of the Galaxy, Jim Valentino, I clicked X-Men, X-Factor, X-Force, I was big into Liefeld. Um, but I was, I was never, I was more into like Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman when I was younger. So I don't, I don't have the, the heritage that Dwight and Ryan does. I guess Ryan's younger than me. So, but the, the amount of characters, it's just like, like I was going to go to San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> and versions Con. of those characters. Yeah. I like if you're on the Star Wars team, you might have, you know, a half dozen Leia's across yeah. the series. Yeah. At most, if you're really getting scene specific, like, well, this is the the five minutes when she's escaping Bespin outfit. But the interesting thing with that is with because a lot of it's comic, like I would say the backbone of our of our legends line is comic based, you know, and it's like you had different artists come on for different books at different times and different phases, and they were they drew them all differently. So when Dwight says I'm gonna do Razorback, he goes back and he probably looks at all the different iterations and then goes, Well, which one are we doing? So it's it's so subjective, but so fun. I love that. And learn about new stuff. I was I was I was meant to go to San Diego Comic Con, but I was ill, and I was going to be on the panel. And I was going to talk about the Century and Razorback and Human Flight. I had no idea who they were. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> I better go and do my homework. And I was like, the Century is like a really interesting character. I was like, wow, that's he's. I've never heard of him. How have I never heard of him? But it's so vast. So is it is it nice to be in that position and being you know sort of excited on the side of like, well, what's visually cool or what seems yeah. just on the surface level I love to new things i love that it's a bit intimidating when i go in like all these people know like dwight and robert and people like that like know everything i don't i don't but i i like it i like learning new characters new stuff like oh that's that's who's that that's cool i mean but, i appreciate like when that dr doom came out that it had the swappable heads i mean the one thing that is is enjoyable about that marvel legends line which you know, I would hope that at some point uh, could be incorporated into the Star Wars lines, is the flexibility with accessories of swappable hands and just the amount of accessories that come with a given figure to yeah. allow for whatever sort of posability and an era, specific era that you want to tailor your figure to, yeah. is appreciated as someone who's also a deep comic book fan. That's cool. And well, enjoys like, well, we, I kind of like that mask a little better than that mask. So we'll never run out of characters. That's the same. I have that option. Uh, well, throwing it out to the universe, it would be swell if all the lines at some point as a Hasbro Pulse thing could bring back accessory packs of just random accessories. Just keep would... my poke. I'm trying to practice my I'm poke. Not, I'm not saying it. That's why I'm, I'm addressing right now the camera of the people watching us not oh. not i'm just, i'm looking past you good to you. <laughs> uh i'm saying just as a universal level that that would be swell yeah uh, i'm surprised and hopeful that one day because of the the how long the line has been going on with great products that are hard to find that one of the best things that happened on the star wars side was an archive series and there's so many Marvel things that it's impossible to find. Uh, speaking yeah. as someone who is a huge fan of the Fantastic Four, and Paris forbid try and find those uh, Walgreens Fantastic Four versions, <laughs> which is a nightmare for someone who loves the Fantastic Four to have only found well, one of guys. I guess you're looking forward to the Fantastic Four then in the end of when did Kevin say it was? Uh, whenever that happens, phase five, end of phase four, whenever I, I think it's, I think it's one of kicks off phase five, I think he said. Uh, but, uh, so, yeah, so I'm but just the, saying, let archive series of things that are because it's so hard to find some of those well, it's early so, it's, releases. So, here's the interesting so, I was, I was one of the I, I always like say I invented, but like I was there for archive, and it was like, hey, I'm getting. I'm I'm very conscious of how much this figure is going on on secondary market auction sites, and while that's cool, it's, it's not fair for everybody. So that was the original impetus of Archive. Marvel kind of does it unofficially anyway. Like Dwight will always bring out like we'll do like um, we announced Mystique, 
mystics like recently and that i knew that would, that would go for a lot of money it was going like i think we, i think a kitty pride was going for a lot or no jubilee sorry like a jubilee was going for a lot of money so they do that anyway they I don't think they brand it but like they often bring back stuff that's racking up we're very aware of secondary yeah. prices yeah. let's say that so we and, try and, and also it's mm-hmm. nice in the archive stuff where you get little tweaks we're like hey yeah. this is a do-over what would we do a little bit better with the tech and marvel does that too it's like i'm like we'll we would inkjet print the faces now on all our comic stuff and so it's like and they're beautiful i mean we haven't done and it's like oh now it's inkjet so yeah, yeah. but I don't, I don't there isn't you're right there isn't a dedicated this is, called, this is what it's called but um the 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 approach is, is still there for certain so what are your just in general thoughts on accessory packs and things like that with world building? Accessory packs are interesting in the sense of like, things always sell when there's a character, generally. Right. You go for the character. So, uh, you know, we've seen mixed bags across the lines, across the decades of like, you know, we had the Phantom Menace accessory packs with, I think they had the little gooby fish and all this kind of <laughs> stuff. And like, we all remember fondly. I don't know whether they sold very well back in those days because they're bag of crates. I'll pick up <laughs> mall instead. So it's tricky. There are tricky things. You know, it, it's you gotta you gotta make sure that they're wanted and make sure that they sell. Because we've but, seen the custom community, you know, how much they love. Like there's the guy yeah. who does energy effects. Yeah. Just various energy effects for characters. And that's the other thing to remember, is like people can get it, people can kind of make their own now. So it's 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 an interesting, and that's my politically you know sound word it's like interesting like accessory packs because like everyone loves accessories but it's, it's sometimes it's tricky yeah of. well when you make a commitment as a company and what the costs are involved to produce mass the amount of thing to tool up and and produce it's a different well, thing to go yeah. that would be swell to what is actually viable at yeah. scale to do that's where you have to do the sanity check the other way. You have to yeah. do the sanity check up to the business end. Uh, but the good thing with Pulse is that it's trying to it's trying new things, trying to kind of deliver things in a different way. Haslabs a proof of that, and the way we kind of do whether it's um, uh, Jabba's, you know, Palace and the Mandalorian, that kind of like pre-sell, you know, not crowdfunding, but a pre-sell kind of thing. So when they they are always looking at different ways of doing. I mean, I've loved from afar the uh, you know what you all are doing with the marvel stuff on the haslab side you know to as again as a fantastic four fan to see that galactus becoming a thing he'll be ready soon i think uh and to see those heralds uh is all you know just impressive to see yeah cool he's gonna look good don't have it but for everyone who did it's great that it exists did you miss that one as well? You keep missing these Haslabs, don't you? <laughs> they, <with> you? <laughs> they don't come at, at great financial times for oh, making the commitment. Oh, okay. So, but I'm glad it exists. So, uh, I'm in anything like this because there's obviously a wide gulf between hoping things happen and knowing that they have happened. And I'm happy if, even if I don't have things to know that they have happened and that's a thing that exists in the world. It's quite Never sad to me. Never very, know. very mature, very adult. Yeah, very good. It's very uh, good. You're a big boy now, Ken. So, we'll leave- so if anyone's listening and has a spare Galactus, I would give you mine, but I only have one. I had two. I, I got two and I gave one already to I will say guy. that if there's oh. anyone out there who does not exist, who has a spare Galactus or a Java sail barge or a USS flag for that you matter. Have mine. It's signed. All mine's signed by all yeah. the teams. One of a million. Uh... You ain't getting that. <laughs> But can I, I make a bed out of it? Can I? Can I like the USS flag? Can I put some sheets down on it? You have to be pretty small. There's it's a lot of pokey bits that. too. Yeah. Uh, so the thing I'll ask on a non-Star Wars level before we sign off, just because you are a neophyte, and I'm curious from a design point of view, just visually, what are the five Marvel characters that have most ingratiated to you? Just from those look cool standpoint knowing that you have no oh. emotional investment just like oh. wow <laughs> and, and remember oh. now, now remember here's the thing i didn't ask figures so i just you, asked, i know i know i'm just thinking the characters I like, who do i like the best i i'm i like spider-man a lot 
I like. I actually like the uh, the video game Spider Man, the PS4 video game. It's one of the best games I've ever played. With the white like spider that, element. I like, suit, I like that suit design that's stretched out. He's really cool. I like. Um, <laughs> I really like Vance Astro. <laughs> In his, in his sort of like blackish blue white with the cap shield i like that i think i just have a thing for that that's really cool um i'm a big fan of i like siren i'm a big fan of siren the green i like green for some reason i don't know why i i think i like green because it's really difficult to print green and orange are the two <laughs> most difficult colors to print and i like i like her design with the stripes and the all that kind of stuff. I always remember her. Is green an element that finds its way into your own artwork? No, not often because it's difficult to print and people don't like green, but I really like green. My favorite color is orange. So I really like orange and I like green. And yeah, uh, don't like pumpkins. <laughs> yeah. So I've got what we got Spidey Siren, we also say Vance Astro, I really like design. Well, I'm trying not to look after uh, all over my shoulder because it's, oh, I like vision. I like retro vision. Again, he's green, green and yellow. Like that's, that's really that's cool. like the ultimate combination of yeah that's really cool and are you a cape person do you like capes in a design yeah i like vision's cape it's very symmetrical i have to be very i'm quite oh, so i was like you're a superman quite... person so clearly there's an emotional yeah superman's like yeah that's just... well all i like anyone that's symmetrical <laughs> batman i like <laughs> batman down the side of the... actually batman's the most symmetrical because he's his emblem is usually symmetrical, whereas Superman's got an S, so it's not symmetrical. So, so Batman you can't actually, mirror image Superman. No, uh, I guess Wal uh, Wolverine. Design wise, I used to really like. I was fascinated. I actually like Cape. I used to really like Nova, not Nova, Quasar or Quasar, however you want to pronounce. With his, with his star with, interior his cosmic cape thing. And... That was. All, I was always intrigued by that, and he had this funny band, which is quite funny. I'm giving very random. And, er and that early '80s hair, he leaned. It. Yeah, I should take my hair off and try and do Quasar. Now, come on, that needs to be your hol your Halloween costume for this year. It needs to be Quasar. Quasar, and then what? I need one more, don't I? Design, guys. I got. I got to look around. I'm sorry. Something else. Oh, Who knew this go Green there? Goblin. I like Green Goblin. Green Goblin. Oh, it's green again. It's, you've woken two things up in me about yeah, the colors and the other thing. Yeah, Green Goblin's cool. I like his eyes. I, I get hung up on the on the pupil size, and I know lots of other people do. Like, is it should be big? Should it be small? And like looking at different figures, and there's always a discussion about how big the pu the pupil should be. And which be. side do you fall on? I like him small. <laughs> I do. I like him small. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So, considering you like, yeah. you, you like the small pupils, having that face tech, that face printing must be a godsend for getting something like that perfect yeah. on a figure. Yeah, yeah, it's good. The, the photo real stuff's wicked. Well, I'm sorry to have put you on the spot so many times. Hey, that's all right. I didn't prep for that one, folks. It, During the course tell? of this, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a tall toy tale. You really can't do like a Marvel episode, right? Because you don't really have. Well, I, I I can do one. It's just it's mostly comics and not figure collecting. Like I I didn't collect uh, secret toy wars. Bits or... Oh, it's, well, so here's the thing. So no, I did. No, I was I was super. I was I was in that weird age where I was just kind of coming out of Star Wars. So I I was aware of Secret Wars, but I was more superpowers. Um, I actually picked up a, a Kingpin toy biz, nineteen ninety four from the Spider. The, the, the doorstop. Yeah, yeah, and I like that. And I was like, "Ooh, I like it." Cuz I work with the Marvel folks, many of which were Toy Biz folks. So I I had a chat with one of them. I said, "I have picked up your Kingpin." She was like, "I remember doing that." And I was like, "I kind of like it. I think I'm going to have to get the rest of them now." So I I, I try and stop myself. <laughs> I try and go, "No, so you did." What you're saying them. is you try, but you don't often succeed yeah. to stop like, yourself. I, I didn't collect them in 94. 94 I was buying and selling Star Wars. I was focused on that. I I wasn't that aware of of modern toys in those days so like and toy biz yeah. really was the toy boom of the 90s if any yeah. company really defined and had the bulk of product out there yeah so 
I, that that doesn't resonate emotionally with me as much because I was doing other stuff at the time. Whereas you speak to Ryan, Ryan Ting on marketing for Marvel, that was him. He was buying that stuff because he was a kid then. He was buying. So he's he's like crazy on all the toy biz, naughty stuff, uh, 90s naughties. Well, so I, it, I appreciate I appreciate that you uh, that you somehow found a way to work classic Kenner into the Marvel line with the retro figures <laughs> yeah it's fun with the five points of articulation and it's the, the classic the, packaging the so basically bonus. you got your superman wish but sideways <laughs> i always get what i want <laughs> no because i love i love them i love that line it's so fun it's so it's so it's like candy i look at it now it's it, like, it is oh, a candy joy stuff. to see those and i won't even i won't even look at your face right now when I say that I can't wait for the eventual hopeful arrival of Dr. Doom in that retro line. Oh. So, uh, and I Ooh. promised I did not look at your face and I'm just hoping for the best here. Cause the really we're about to finish the fantastic four. I can, I can guarantee you something. It won't have felt. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Hard pass. <laughs> Hard pass. You had one job. You had one job, <laughs> which was to recreate this in a modern line and you know sorry will the holster at least be felt at least give me that or the colored tape can you do that for the buckle i'll put a bit of colored tape on for you if we ever do it <laughs> fingers crossed yeah. uh well where can people find you online and where should they because you get about to launch a second season of tall toy tales i gotta record it first yeah yeah so i am um, i spend most of my time you can ask my wife on instagram at Mr. Stevie 18, Stevie 18, Mr. Stevie 18. The most and, beautiful uh, posts. You I have the, you. the finest post production. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's fun. It's really fun. It's very therapeutic. I love engaging with the community. I love finding new talent and people that are doing crazy things with toy photography or artwork. So I have my hashtag toy fan talent, which I set up, which I think has got like 5,000 tags. I think I, I think I started it. I think I did. I'm going to say I did. Um, <laughs> I, I often scroll through there and just like, oh, what's, what's that person doing? That's cool. And I just meet loads of new people. I met a guy in Norway on Smurfs who's fascinating. I meet people all over the world just chatting and they send me stuff. You know, I make friends with like people like Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas. Like who knew? And like, hey, how's it going? Oh, really cool. I collect Marvel. That's cool. What are you doing? And we chat and then he invites me to a to a show and comes out and says hello. So like, it's really cool. I mean, all walks of life. The best yeah. aspect is community. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I don't know where I would be without it. I really don't. I get really over the past couple of years to have yeah. community. And it's, to and it's, it's interesting because it's like, I, I come across as very <laughs> extrovert. I'm not at all. I'm exhausted, like two hours talking. I'm like, I gotta go and lie down. But um, the, the Instagram gives me my kind of the, my comfortable level where I can show off and act up and be yeah yeah yeah. But then I'm not. I can I can control it. I can like okay. I'm not gonna engage. With, I'm not gonna talk to this person quite yet. I'm feeling a bit kind of low. Or, so it allows me to really feel part of a community at a pace that's comfortable for my own my own persona, which is is great. So and you become an adult children's presenter, just like the classic shows that you would watch. You need to come up with your your full theme song. We need a full orchestration between behind your. I can do that. I'm always whistling and humming. I'll do that. Yeah, that'd be cool. I just all I want to be, all I want to be when I grow up, I want to be like 80 years old and wear like orange suits and kind of just have like an old toy shop, like Mr. Stevie's toy dungeon, and just have kids from all ages, like from 60 to six, come in and just play with all different eras of toys. So no toys are packaged in your store. No. Everything no. is loose. Got to be loose. Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. I'm a way away from retiring. Yeah. I, I, also, I love that. Uh, now I, at least I know the number for when adulthood is when it comes to, so 80. Just need 80. To... <laughs> I'm going to be working until I'm 80 years old, probably. I don't think I'll ever retire. I don't think that it's like, like my dad. My dad just kind of like stopped working, but then ran a deli. He was like doing that. And it's like, I don't know. 
Who knows? I mean, you're, you're doing the thing you want to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to do anything else. So it's difficult to walk away from when you found the thing that you wanted. Yeah, it is. I, I I can see me doing this till till I can't do it anymore in some capacity, whether it's the setting up the big retro toy line or running a toy shop or being a voiceover artist for some crazy cartoon. I don't know. <laughs> The good news is that there's always stuff to do. There's always stuff you can try. Well, you know, I, I'm trying to tell that to my kids at the moment. They're going to Sam's off to university. The girls are entering sophomore year in high school. And I'm like, what do you want to be? What's your dream job? I said to Sam and he's like, I want to work in Formula One motor racing or space industry, SpaceX. I went, right. So I put out a note to LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. And within six hours, I had about 12 contacts for him, director of SpaceX, you know, inventor of this satellite technique. I mean, there you go. Just make it happen. Just go. It's community. Just go out, enter the community. Yeah. Well, you'll, find your way. you'll find your way. And know that you're not locked to it. Yeah. That if you decide you want that it's not for you, feel feel comfortable to walk away from it and yeah. try something else. Yeah. That's the don't don't feel you're trapped. So this has been quite inspirational <laughs> for me. I'm not going to assume for anyone else. No, you got to edit this. Cause it's like two and a half, two and a quarter hours. You got to, oh, I'm going to make it longer. <laughs> We're going to play it like half speed. Yeah. <laughs> I want people to work for this epiphany at the end. They need to get to the point where they think I want them to earn it. Like, like we've earned it. Uh, so I want to thank you for being the guest on this episode oh, of Force you Five. For me. It's wicked. Uh sorry to put you through the ringer when it came to having to choose. It's okay. It's all right. Knowing that it's it's only as permanent as when I press stop and you get to choose again. I'm gonna put these away and go, oh, I shouldn't have chosen that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone's gonna be on that shelf saying, I was right here. Yeah. I was right well, here. They will. And you looked over me. Uh, and thank you for watching this. Whoever's watching this right now, thank you uh, for that. If you would like to support it, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash Ken Plume. At even the dollar level, you get access to a ton of audio exclusives, panels, quiz shows, chats that I've done with a whole bunch of wonderful guests. There's hundreds of things out there for you to watch and listen to. Uh, if you're a fan of DuckTales, I have a book coming out, The Art of DuckTales, uh, for the 2017 series. Exactly. Another thing that really deserved a decent toy line. Uh, go to bit.ly slash DuckTales book. That comes out in a matter of weeks. Pre-orders matter, uh, I guess, to other people. Me too. But they, uh, I guess they, they matter to folks. And social media, you know where to find me, at Ken Plume on various things. And TikTok, I do weird videos with the weird action figures that I get in now and some stories and such i still haven't worked out a proper way to say goodbye on these things so i'm just gonna say i do good i like that <laughs> uh, that's that's a front runner now so bye everybody <laughs> adieu everybody see you soon adios